of Green Bay, Bob Lilly of the Cowboys, David Deacon Jones, the classical defensive end, and center Jim Otto, Oakland's Fable 00. You'll see part of today's induction ceremonies at halftime of today's annual kickoff of the 1980 NFL season. You're looking at a live shot of Foster Stadium where we're minutes away from the kickoff between the Chargers of San Diego and the Green Bay Packers. Dan Faust led the Chargers to the Western Division title of the AFC last year with passes like this to John Jefferson, who recorded his second thousand-yard season. Faust himself an NFL record breaker with over 4,000 yards on the year. It was a different type of year for Green Bay's Bart Starr. This man of so much pride and so much accomplishment as a player has not been able to turn it around. You'll see their opening contest today against the San Diego Chargers on an expanded edition of Wide World of Sports. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport. It is a stifling hot day in the Ohio Valley city of Canton, one of the pioneer cities for professional football in this country. Hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell. We want to immediately welcome you to this, the advent, believe it or not, of our second decade of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. We begin it, as always, on a Saturday afternoon with the traditional Hall of Fame special presentation. Today, the Chargers against the Pack. And this year, Bart hopes that the Pack can really start to come back. Frank's already touched on that. I should like to emphasize that Dandy Don isn't with us today. He will be joining us for our regular season opener on September 8th, Dallas at Washington. Always a classic struggle. And in that vein, let me quickly tell you that while we can't predict how the teams will fare during the regular season, if past is prologue, we We've got the finest Monday night football schedule ever put together. With us today to tell you first about the Chargers, a team with Super Bowl possibilities, Fran Tarkin. Well, how are the San Diego Chargers are for real? They're big, they're fast, they're strong, and they can play. And they can play with teams such as the Pittsburgh Steelers. Their Achilles heel has always been the running game. If they're going to get to the Super Bowl this year, they've got to run the ball better than they did a year ago. Frank, tell us about the pack. Uh, you got the best team to talk about. About, friend. Quite frankly, uh, the Green Bay Packers, well, they, 1978, they got over 500, but last year things really fell apart for the Packers and Bart Starr. They went back to 5'11", but principally because of a rash of injuries you just could not believe. They lost at one time or another all of their running backs, and Bart Starr, of course, of course, hopes he can reverse that. He has a group of youngsters. They are going to be playing their first game today. They're going to be a little nervous. They're going to be a little hot. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this. Chester Marco will kick off the 1980 NFL preseason competition of the Green Bay Packers. Deep number 21, Harry Price from McNeese State, a rookie for the San Diego Chargers, and Price will take the ball. And Price out of the 20, out close to the 24-yard line. And Les Smith, the offensive talent, the San Diego Chargers will begin with quarterback Dan Fouts. Dan Fouts, quarterback, University of Oregon. Clarence William, running back, South Carolina. Don Woods, running back, University of New Mexico. John Jefferson, Arizona State University, wide receiver. Wide receiver, Brown State University. for the gain of about five yards out close to the 30-yard line. Hit there by Estes Hood. Offensively, we will meet the offensive unit. First, we'll take a look at Kellen Winslow coming off a broken leg of a year ago. Chuck Laven, a right tackle, is in there in place of Russ Washington. Big Ed White, number 67, is in there, as is Bob Rush at center. Doug Wilson, Wilkerson, the big left guard, is in there, number 63, Billy Shields. Number 66, the left tackle. Second down, about of six yards, the ball about the 29-yard line. Bounce inside handoff, goes to Bauer. Bauer looks to move behind the big block of Doug Wilkerson, number 63. And let's meet defensively the Packers. They have a new alignment, a 3-4, leaving the traditional 4-3 of Green Bay. There are your front men. 
And let's take a look at your linebackers. Radzinski is in there because Rich Wingo, their most valuable player of a year ago, inside linebacker, cannot go today. And there is your defensive secondary. Questionable in the NFC Central Division last year. Eighth against the pass. They were 13th against the rush. On third down and three, Fouts puts it in the air, going to John Floyd. And Floyd has the football out close to the 45-yard line. They'll mark it inside the 43. First and 10 for the San Diego Chargers. They were an aerial team last year, the first team in the history of the NFL to win a division and throwing the ball more than they ran the football. Which is not always the brightest thing to do, and some feel, as Fran has already mentioned, that was their basic problem a year ago. Bouts to Floyd, has moved the ball out close to the 43-yard line of the San Diego Chargers. Inside handoff, Bauer gets a big block from Ed White, turns inside and runs into a bunch of the Green Bay Packers. Radzinski was there along with Mike Douglas, number 53. Seems, seems funny, doesn't it, Fran and Howard, to look at the Green Bay Packers lining up at a 3-4? It's the first time they've ever done it, and I think many teams will do that this year, Frank, because most teams got burned by the pass last year, and they're not getting much pass rush, so they said instead of uh, rushing four, let's drop eight men back in the secondary and fill up those lanes. So far, it hadn't worked. There'll be other new wrinkles. You'll probably see them using the shotgun on offense today, Frank. Second down, six, four-yard pickup by Bauer. The ball at the 41-yard line. Bouts again. Dumps it off to the checkoff man, Clarence Williams. Williams to midfield, short of the first down. It'll be third down and about two. Estes Hood moving up there quickly, defensively number 38, along with John Anderson, number 59. And if Anderson can stay healthy for the Packers, he will aid that 3-4 defense they use. A fine linebacker, third-year man out of Michigan. He has really had some problems. Last year he had a broken arm and suffered through most of the year with that. San Diego lining up right now at midfield. Third down, a little over two yards to go for their second first down. Bouts, fires, and it's to Williams. Williams has the first down. That's that control passing game that the San Diego Chargers used so well last year. Watching them quickly, gone a yardage in the air again, and there was the 79 record of Mr. Fouts. Francis, Fouts threw over, well, he threw seven more than 300 yard games last year. His team lost four of those games. Uh, we'll talk about that after this play, Howard. But it's a good point. The first down is at the 44 yard line of the Green Bay Packers. Out of the eye formation, handoff, flags down. Williams has the football, dropped at the line of scrimmage. While we're waiting for the penalty, I think that what they're doing is using the personnel they have to the best of their ability. They have great receivers, a great quarterback who throws the ball. They have not come up with a great running back, and you have to have that to, to have a running game that's, uh, that's good. Our official referee today is Jim Tunney. Name recognized in officiating circles. Let's hear from Jim Tunney. Offside, defense, number 70, Fox. He loves it, Tunney. He's an actor. Robert Barber filling in for Ezra Johnson at the right end. It was offside. First down and five. The ball inside the 40 at the 39-yard line. Inside handoff. Bauer tries the middle. Scrambles for a couple. Down close to the 36-yard line. Short of a first down. It'll be second down and two. Hit in there by Terry Jones and Robert Barber. Frank, the one thing about the three-man line, you don't get much pass rush. And, of course, San Diego probably has as good a, a pass blocking line as there is in football. And if one thing the Green Bay Packers want to do is increase a pass rush, a dismal one a year ago. Second down, two, handoff. Clarence Williams, the fourth-year man out of South Carolina. Fifth-round draft pick about four years ago. Short of the first down at the 35-yard line. It'll be third and one. One of the pack's key pass rushers is Ezra Johnson, who's not even suited up today. But that injury is not a severe one. There is Clarence. South Carolina. 
Offensive change for the Chargers. Steve Whitman comes in. Hank Bauer is in there as we see the three backs. Whitman in the wing back, bottom of your screen. Third down and a yard. Hand off is Bauer. The short yardage man has been so effective for the Chargers the last couple of years. Picks up the first down at the 31-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. Two-yard Bauer, they call him. Put him in to score the touchdowns from inside the five, somewhat in the manner for many years of Pete Banaszak with Oakland. But you'll see later in this game, I'm sure, some playing time for John Capaletti. Apparently healthy again, the man acquired from Los Angeles. The Heisman Trophy winner from Penn State. Yep. Floyd goes out to the left. Jefferson is out to the right. Fouts is going to the air. Intended for Jefferson. Jefferson had to pull up. Good defensive coverage by John Anderson. Got right into the pattern. Jefferson had to throw it away. It'll be second and ten. You know, Fran, you mentioned the absence of a great running back. They thought they had solved their running back problem. San Diego did when they got Lydell Mitchell, number 26, from Baltimore, and Mike Thomas, the slithery, slithery back from Washington. Thomas out for the year, knee surgery. Mitchell has to prove that he can be what once he was. And Mitchell is in there at the moment, number 26. Second down and 10. Draw. And off his power. Collected there by Robert Barber. Dropped for a loss. Back to the 34-yard line. It'll be third down and 14. Lydell Mitchell, of course, had orthoscopic surgery a year ago, and he suffered from a staph infection after that. Howard, do you Very think... Very ineffective throughout the entire season of last year. Howard, do you think John Capletti can be that great back for him? No. Down 14. Three wide receivers. Floyd is on the outside. Top of your screen, the slot is Jefferson. Bounce, once Jefferson. And at the five yard line, he was open for a moment at Fouts, let him, but he did not. Incomplete fourth down, we'll see the field goal unit for San Diego. All right. All right, here we go with Jefferson, uh, who in his first two years has caught about 115 passes. He gets a little seam there, takes a perfect pass, fouts under, threw him a little bit. Could have been a touchdown if the ball had been better thrown. All right, it's on fourth down. I anticipated that we would see a field goal unit, the ball at the 35-yard line. We're going to see Mike Kirkland. He'll be doing the putting for San Diego this afternoon. Kirkland hangs it high. Deep is Johnny Gray. He lets it bounce, and it's down at the five-yard line. Bob Gregory is down there, and Green Bay will start over at their own five-yard line. And let's meet the offensive unit of the Green Bay Packers. They're young, not too celebrated. Let's begin with their quarterback, Lynn Dickey. Kansas State University. Cordell Middleton, running back, Memphis State. Eddie Lee Avery, running back, Georgia Tech. James Lofton, wide receiver, Stanford University. Andre Thompson, wide receiver, East Texas State University. So the Green Bay Packers, it's almost like their season of a year ago when they were 5 and 11. They will begin their preseason, the ball just inside the six-yard line. Lynn Dickey, by the way, is a great story. Came to the Packers years ago and had a lot of problems as a Houston Oiler where he came up in 72. He dislocated a hip, broke a leg, separated a shoulder with the Packers and finished last season as a starter for the Green Bay Packers after missing 34 games. Here he is, Lynn Dickey, 10-year veteran out of camp. Kansas State, leading the Chargers from their six-yard line. And off is Eddie Lee Ivory, and Ivory busts the tackle and moves out to the 15-yard line, and this is what they hoped they'd get from Ivory last year when he was injured, had to have knee surgery. The offensive line now for the Green Bay Packers, an unheralded tight end who caught 56 last year is Paul Kaufman. Greg Cook is the right tackle. Leotis Harris, the right guard. Larry McCarron is the center. Daryl Goforth, that's a good name for a guard. Yes, McCarron in the center. There's Goforth. He's the left guard. And Tim Stokes is over on the left side, number 76, filling in for an injured Mike Concar. Second down and one. Nine-yard pickup by Ivory. Ivory gets the call again. Hesitates, finds the opening, gets out for the first down, out to the 23-yard line. Defensively, Dejournay was in there. And let's meet the Chargers front four. 
there they are, Dijonet. He can play anywhere along that line. The big name, Louis Kelcher, coming off knee surgery. Will he be what he's been in the past? And that's only great. Good linebackers, particularly Woody Lowe, Preston. They both had five interceptions of a year ago. Former Green Bay Packer, Willie Buchanan, anchoring the left side defensively in the 4-3 defense of the San Diego Chargers. Second down and 10. The ball at the 23-yard line. Andre Thompson split to the right, out to the left, off to Dickey will put it in the air. And open and is picked off. Mike Williams picks it off from San Diego, has the football near the 25-yard line of the Packers. That's a bad place to throw. Nobody threw over Williams as we look at the replay last year, but nobody. He has become one of the very best. Well, they fake the running play here to the to the deep back uh, Middleton, and then he's got the tight end, 82, running across the field. When you run across the field, you lose sight of defensive backs. Out of the left corner of the, uh, the picture, you're going to see uh, Williams come up and make the interception. He hasn't had a touchdown pass though in like two years. He is really an underrated defensive back. Maybe as good a cover man as there is in the National Football League. New quarterback for the San Diego Chargers, Mike Kirkland, picked up as a free agent this year. You remember him from Baltimore years ago. He hands it off to another former Colt, Lydell Mitchell, who gets in trouble. Scrambles around, digs up a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. There's Mike Kirkland, missed the 79 season after being released by Baltimore, was the Colts' second round pick in, second, fifth round pick, that is, in 76. Backed up Bird Jones, remember in 78 when Bird had so many problems? Don Woods is in there now, Bird along with Lydell Mitchell. Sorry, Frank, Bird's still not throwing well in camp. Second down and eight, Kirkland wants to put it in the air and runs into trouble. He needs sacks. Back at the 32-yard line, and a flag is down. It was Terry Jones, the nose guard, getting in there defensively for the pack. But the guy that really caused the uh, the, the sack was Mike Butler, the defensive left end, who can truly be a great player, but he doesn't play consistently enough. The flag was down. I, well, it's not a flag. As a matter of fact, it's a piece of paper. You can see it right there by the 30-yard line. So there is no penalty. Loss of seven, third down, 17. As we look at Don Coriel, he's 20 and nine since he came to the Chargers. Brought them their first division title since 1965, last year. Third and 17. Kirkland, trouble again. Robert Farber, who's filling in for the injured Ezra Johnson, gets to Kirkland. Quick whistle, of course, stops the play at the 40-yard line. Robert Barber can rush the pass. So they got him from the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's Kirkland going back in the pocket. They got a kind of a prevent defense on. They got a four-man rush line. He gets some pressure from the right side. Here comes Barber. And that brings up fourth down. Out comes the punting team for the Chargers. Mike Kirkland remains on to punt. Jeff West punted for the Chargers a year ago. They weren't happy and it's bobbled. Kirkland falls out at the 42-yard line and the 47-yard line. And the Packers will have field position. They began at the five with their first series. Now they'll be at the 47-yard line when we return to Canton, Ohio in a moment. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Fran Tarkenton and Hall of Fame Day in Canton, Ohio, where earlier today Jim Otto, Bob Lilly, David Jones, and Herb Adderley were enshrined at the nearby Hall of Fame facility. We can see it, as a matter of fact, from our booth as we look out over the field. The Green Bay Packers have the football. Kirkland bobbled the punt attempt a few moments ago. The Packers have the football inside the 47-yard line of the San Diego Chargers. No score in the game. 6-0-2 remaining in the first quarter. Then Dickey remains a quarterback, tosses quickly out to Turdell Middleton. Middleton twists and slides out to the outside, gets down around the 44-yard line. A gain of a couple will be second down and eight. Willie Buchanan defensively there, number 28 for San Diego. As you watch Dickey at the quarterback position, there's a picture of Willie. Remember, he was a number one draft choice for the back at the beginning of his pro career. Dickey has had a metal rod taken out of his leg, a brace taken off his knee. Frank had touched earlier upon the total rehabilitation of the man over a span of years. It's a remarkable human being. Thompson in motion for Green Bay. Handoff is Eddie Lee Ivory and Eddie Lee Ivory is going to be dumped for a loss on a second down and eight call. The ball back at the 48-yard line. Woody
Woody Lowe was up there quickly defensively, number 51, along with Gary Johnson, number 79 for San Diego. Frank, in looking at Green Bay, two people in offensive lineup are, are very key to him. Dickey, as you mentioned already, if he can stay healthy and be the player that he's been, could really help him. Number 40, Eddie Lee Ivory, has got to be a great running back for him. And last year he missed the entire season with, knee, with, with a knee injury. But if he can get going, it'll help Bart Starr's running game. It'll be third down and 11. Off the split to the right, Thompson to the left, and you saw the penetration. Wilbur Young moving across the line of scrimmage. Flag is down, and we'll see whether Wilbur Young, who had such a great year when he moved in to replace Louis Kelcher a year ago at tackle, has now moved out to the defensive left end as Kelcher is back into the lineup for the Chargers. You saw the indication going against the Chargers. Well, the interesting thing is Young moves back as the penalty is paced off to the end position. Offside, 99 defense. He prospered as he never did before last year, Frank, moving into tackle from it. Tom Landry said at the ceremonies today the smartest thing he ever did was move Lilly from end to tackle. So the man cannot necessarily play each position with equal efficiency. Third down and nine. Lynn Dickey, the quarterback, sends Paul Kaufman his tight end in motion. He has the time, tries to go to Kaufman, and Woody Lowe was there, and a flag is down. And it could have been an illegal chuck, or we get the holding indication now. And it'll be against the Green Bay Packers. Frank, as we mentioned at the top of the show, this may be the finest pass rush in defensive line in football. They can really come get you, and they're playing without two of their fine defensive ends, Leroy Jones and Fred Dean. Holding, 68, refuse, fourth down. Fourth down coming up. David Beverly comes off with the Green Bay Packers. Greg Cook, right tackle for the Packers, guilty of the holding. Dropping deep. Number 86, John Floyd for the Chargers. Beverly coming off his best year. Uh, six years in the NFL from a year ago. Angles for the sidelines. And he will not catch it. He catches the end zone instead. And that will be a touchback. And San Diego will take over at the 20-yard line when we return to Fossil Stadium here in Canton, Ohio, after this message. The festivities have been going on throughout the entire week and reigning over those festivities. The queen of... Hall of Fame activities, that's Rhonda Jo Gibbs and her court. We'll see more of them at halftime, and of course we'll see part of the induction ceremonies that took place a couple of hours ago. First down and 10 for the Chargers, following the touchback, the punt of Beverly going to the end zone, the ball of the 20-yard line. Mike Kirkland remains the quarterback handoff. Don Woods out over the 20 to the 21-yard line, and that's about it. It'll be second down and nine. Don Woods, of course, former Green Bay Packer himself. He was nailed there by Mike Douglas, number 53. Shortly, I trust you'll be seeing a young rookie quarterback from San Jose State named Luther wearing number 11 for San Diego. San Diego did not have any of its first three draft choices. The opposition team, Green Bay, took three defensive men in its first two rounds and have lost all three. We'll talk more about the draft and these teams later. On second down, nine yards, Kirkland dumps it off, intended for the checkoff man, Don Woods. Under pressure, Kirkland cannot reach him. It'll be third down and nine. Frank Green Bay did the one thing that time that you have to do when you have a three-man line. That's you got to do some blitzing from the outside. And that time, John Anderson, who could be a great linebacker, pressured Kirkland into the bad throw. San Diego specializes in discarded Baltimore quarterbacks. Kirkland, one evidence, Bill Troop, another. Don Coriel won a couple of divisional titles, 74 and 75 with the Cardinals. He's a winner, and he believes in putting the football in the air. He's been doing that throughout his professional and collegiate career. Correction, Bill Troop, of course, Green Bay. Kirkland on third down and nine. He'll pick up the first down on the ground. Kirkland has the first down out of the 37-yard line, piled up there by safety man Johnny Gray, and not until Kirkland gets the first down. 
I didn't know Kirkland could run that good. Howard, uh, Green Bay's gone to a four-man line. They're in a prevent type of defense, pass situation. He's got just a big gap right up the middle. He does what he should do, tucks it under and runs, and he's pretty quick. This may be a special. <laughs> it may be. If he can throw as good as he can run, it'd be okay. Pickup of 17 yards for the young quarterback who did not play last year after being released from Baltimore. Ball at the 37-yard line of the Chargers. Still no score. Handoff, Don Woods. And Woods barrels out for a pickup of about seven to the 44-yard line. It'll be second down and three. Don Woods, a former 1,000-yard gainer when he came to San Diego on waivers from the Green Bay Packers back in 74. Frank, in all truth and honesty, you know, San Diego has a bunch of guys that were former 1,000-yard ground gainers, but there's nobody back there that's going to be the quality back that they need to have to really contend for a Super Bowl berth. Well, they were pretty strong a year ago, losing to Houston in the playoffs, 17-14. to 14. But I agree, they do not really have the great running talent. Second down and three, and the handoff goes to Don Woods. That was not a game and they anticipated losing, Frank, since Houston won it without Pastorini, without Burrow, without and Camp. without Camp. Woods gets about a yard. It'll be third down and two, and Woods, after that great season he had in 74, and went knee surgery, he never really has regained the form that he showed that year. You know, you would think with the offensive line of San Diego, and it's a big, strong offensive line that you could run the football, but it's not a... There's Capaletti. Maybe he could be the guy that helps him. But he's a good he's a good running back, Howard. He's not a great running back, but he is a good running back. San Diego wants timeout. They use a timeout. Kirkland drifts over to talk to Don Coriel. We have 149 remaining in the first quarter, and we have no score, and we'll be returning in a moment. First time anyone from the South Bend area ever said anything really nice to me. Good reason. Well, I never heard him at SC. Third down and two as we return. San Diego has the ball. They're in the short yard each. Offense set at the 45-yard line. Handoff goes to Don Woods. Don Woods bangs in there close, but I do believe he's going to be short. Let's pause five seconds and allow our local stations all along the line to identify themselves. Channel 7, WLS-TV, Chicago. There is the story. They're looking at the yard markers. I believe we'll probably have a measurement. Steve Loop, defensive captain for the Green Bay Packers, number 46 up there, looking it over with the officials. And Jim Tunney says, bring him in, we'll take a measurement. Let's Come on, they do that. Let's talk a little bit about some of the players who aren't here today. Fred Dean, the all-pro, pro bowl, defensive end for the Chargers. He's not here. No one seems to know where he is. Bob Klein, he's talking retirement, the tight end for the Chargers. Russ Washington, all-pro offensive tackle. He played out his option. He, they expect him to sign soon. John Capaletti, we've talked about him. He has a sore groin. Leroy Jones, defensive end, sore knee. We've been watching as Wilbur Young has performed there. Mike Thomas, he hurt his knee in a racquetball game in May. Could be back by the season start. Louis Kelcher, well, he's back in the lineup. A lot of players missing a lot of the hot air early in training camp. First and 10 from the 47, and Kirkland gets rid of it quickly to Lydell Mitchell. Mitchell, as he did so many times for the Baltimore Colts, explodes down the sideline to the 40 and a first down. You know, it's the first time I've seen a flash like that from Lydell, Fran, in a long time. Well, he had two great big old linemen out in front of him. It was kind of a running type screen. Looked like Green Bay put on a good pass rush, but they wanted them to do that. They got two linemen out in front of him, and he had some room to run. Lydell, again, as we said earlier, underwent knee surgery a year ago, and orthoscopic, orthoscopic scopic surgery, they call it now, and he developed a staph infection. He's just coming back. First and ten, the ball at the 40-yard line of the pack. No score. Kirkland. Flag is down as Kirkland is thrown for a two-yard loss at the 42-yard line. Kent Lathrop. Second-year man out of Arizona State in there defensively for the back. And we're going to get a holding call. It'll go against the Chargers. Billy Shields, I think, number 66, was holding. I think you're right, Howard. And Lydell Mitchell said, why didn't you throw me the ball, Kirkland? Because nobody was in 15 yards of him. The Green Bay Packers are dropping the linebackers way back, as one will do this time in training camp. But they're leaving the backs alone. 66 yards. How'd you know that, Howard? That 
with shields? How would you know that? Very easy. I watched it. You called that before Tunney did. Another evidence of, well, that's not <laughs> Another evidence of succeeding on a low-round draft choice. Billy Shields from Georgia Tech. Sixth round pick in 1975, Billy Shields. Cost the Chargers 10. They're back at midfield. First down and 20. Here comes a safety blitz. And all over the left side is Lydell Mitchell, and Mitchell gets back to the 46-yard line. Gain of about four. You mentioned that 75 draft giver of the Chargers. This Charger team was essentially built on that draft. They got Kelcher, they got Dean, they got Big Hands Johnson, they got Billy Shields, they got Mike Fuller. Quality defensive back. And they got Mike Williams. I think we have to also say, wasn't that Tommy Prothrow directing that? Prothrow really was brilliant in terms of player personnel discovery and evaluation. Second down, 17. Could be the final play of the first quarter. Kirkland will go down. Sacked again at the 48-yard line for a five-yard loss. Clock, of course, stopped when the quarterback is sacked. Two seconds remaining in the first quarter. John Mendenhall from the Giants, now playing the nose guard. Former All-Pro performer himself, John Mendenhall, very quick. Seems to have a whole different attitude here. The third coming, man. Well, it happens many times, Howard. Uh, when, when some player has had trouble with one team and he has one last chance to make it, he does change his attitude and becomes a better player. And that is the end of the first quarter. Teams will change in a very warm day. If they look like they're running in mud at times, well, they feel that way, too. They've been working out twice a day. We'll be back in a moment. We're back in Canton, Ohio on the 18th annual Hall of Fame game. Jim Otto, Bob Lilly, David Jones, Herb Adderley all inducted into the hall today to bring that membership to 105. Right now the Chargers are looking over third down and 20. Kirkland's the quarterback. And Kirkland is going to go down again. And it's Kent Lathrop who hustles in there and drops Kirkland all the way back inside his own 40-yard line where it'll be fourth down. San Diego will trot out their putting team. There is a Lathrop, second-year man out of Arizona State. Big, too, 6'5", 253-pounder. These Packers are young. They're also huge. Many of them. They are big. The oldest guy on the Packer team, Frank, is 31. The average age is just under 25. Has to be maybe the youngest team in football. I'll tell you, they're making Bart Starr very old, very young. <laughs> Kirkland hangs it really high. Jafus White, 10th round draft pick out of Texas A&I. Takes it for the pack, and he's hit at the 25 and sprawls out to the 27. 48-yard punt by Mike Kirkland. Well, here are some of the NFC veterans not in camp. The great defensive back, Plank of the Bears, hits like a linebacker. Brooks, both young bloods. Hara for the Rams. You know about Galbraith, that brilliant back of New Orleans, so great at coming out of the backfield. He's been given a deadline by Steve Rosenblum. And John Riggins is not with Washington. He has left Dickinson, Pennsylvania. Carlisle, uh, Dickinson College, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And I spoke to Bobby Bethard. There's an injury. We'll wait on that. Bobby Bethard, the general manager of the Redskins, last talked with John, who uh, has a year to go on his contract and then an option year. John's gone home. Bethard uh, has not given him any deadline, nor has Riggins, for that matter, uttered one to the Redskins' office. They hope and pray they get Big John back. He's one of the better ones. That's Bob Rush being assisted off the field. But the charges looks like he's all right. That's not the one who was a right-hander for the Cubs in the 50s, <laughs> is it? No, <Well>, Rush <laughs> does the snapping, and he was hustling down there in the putt. He looks to be all right. So it's first and 10 for the Packers. The ball at their 28-yard line. Ron Cassidy is in there. And one wide receiver now for the Packers, number 88. Walter Tullis, 87, is the other wide receiver. Tight end, number 89, rather 83, John Thompson. Handoff, Turdell Middleton over the left side, out of the 32, the 31-yard line. A gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Hit there by Lyndon King. Here are two first-round draft picks still unsigned. Gifford, Curtis Dickey, the speedster, who's with Baltimore. Not yet, though. And Doug Martin with Minnesota. Not there yet. Out of Washington. Questionable first-round draft choice, as I saw it, Francis. A real, a real injury background. That's right. A, 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 a very bad thing. 
Second down, seven. No score. We're into the second quarter. Hall of Fame day, Canton, Ohio. Ben Dickey hands off to Eddie Lee Ivory. And Ivory up to the 35-yard line for a gain of about four. It'll be third down and three. That's Bob Brush. Ivory can be one of the better running backs in the National Football League. He's got that kind of ability. He can, Howard, but I'm not so sure he shouldn't be a tailback. He's really a natural tailback, but they want to get he and Turdell Middleton both in the backfield, as you look at Eddie Lee Ivory there. But uh, and that's their two best runners, so they have to sacrifice a, a fullback-type player to get both of them in the, in the lineup. You've got a point there, and they have to hope Middleton comes back to his form of two years ago. He did not have a good season last year. Ivory, of course, a one pick a year ago, injured in the very first game missed the season third down three dickey gets the ball off a flag is down back where you usually find the flag in a holding situation the attempt there to walter tullis incomplete pete shaw covering tullis there is a holding and it's against the green bay packers there is another young back of great potential on this Green Bay team. Yes, That's a kid is. from Maryland. Steve Atkins is coming back from knee surgery. Holding penalty. Declined because it brings up fourth down. Dave Beverly comes out to do the putting. There he is. Dropping deep. John Floyd, a fourth-round draft pick of a year ago. He's a fourth-round draft pick, and San Diego thought he'd be much higher than that, but he was coming off a broken leg as a senior in college. We'll take a look at John Floyd from his 17-yard line. Floyd up the middle, gets out close to the 30-yard line. They'll mark it at the 29, where it'll be first and 10 for the Chargers. 13-11 remaining in the second quarter. No score from Canton, Ohio. Dan Fast, we saw him for the Chargers the very first series. That was it, four for six. He could not get it in for any Take it scoring. quite luck, Frank. I don't think we're going to see much more of him today. I don't believe we will either. Of course, see both teams have only been in training camp a couple of weeks. Really do not like to take great chances with their veterans. On first and ten, Chargers. This is Lou Harrington. Harrington. Harrington, a six-round draft pick, coming off collegiate knee surgery. This kid I want you to look at, LaRue Harrington from Norfolk College. He was, as Frank said, a six-round draft choice. He was suspect because of a knee and of surgery, but they think they've got a ten-strike in this kid. He is quick. Six feet tall, 210-pounder. In fact, even though they didn't, they didn't even have pick till the fourth round, Frank, and they think they've had a whale of a, gra a draft. Gain of seven, second down of three. The ball goes to Bo Matthews, tries the left side, piled up the line of scrimmage, and hustling over there defensively was Casey Merrill. I want to tell you, Frank, while you talk about Harrington, I'm impressed with Casey Merrill. He, he, he ran down Harrington on the other side of, was just a play before, and that time he runs to the right side. I don't know what his speed is in the 40, and I really don't care. But I know he can run down backs from, from, from the same side. He's another one of those Packers that underwent knee surgery during the offseason. He's not very big to be playing that outside position. Well, he's 250-pounder. Big enough. Do you ever think we would say that's not very big? Third down three. San Diego with the ball at their own 35-yard line. Quarterback is Mike Kirkland. Kirkland fires and is almost picked off. And it was Steve Wagner that moved right in front of Michael Scott. Missed the interception. It'll be fourth down. And out comes the punting unit for the Chargers. <laughs> well, maybe that's a summary of this game thus far. Yeah, there are any circumstances. They are playing Mike Kirkland at quarterback. But I don't think for very much longer. Not, not just today, but for the days and weeks to come. Howard, my question is why would they do that? I don't think they have any notion that Mike Kirkland is going to make their football team. And why would they... Why would they play him in a situation like hey, that? Hey, he might make it as a punter. He really pounded this one. Jafus White, the rookie from Texas I, from his own 17-yard line, runs into a crowd, drives it back out of it, pays for it at the 24-yard line. <laughs> hey, the best thing to do is put your head down and... <laughs> well, you'll learn, Jafus. We'll be back in Canton after a moment. <laughs> We're back in Canton, Ohio. The Green Bay Packers have the football, 24-yard line. Not a whole lot of excitement thus far. First real action for many of these players. Rosters between 75 and 80. Some duplicate numbers. You try and keep your straight. Packers have the football. The quarterback, Dave Lynn Dickey. Dickey goes with the screen to Sammy Lee Johnson. Sammy Lee rolls up close to a first down out around the 34-yard line, driven out of bounds by Pete 
bench off. Sammy Lee was a rookie with the Vikes when Sir Francis was still the cornerstone of that team. Well, that's the, there's Sammy. There's no question Sammy Johnson. What a body, huh? No question he can play football. He's, he's a great running back. He's a good blocker. He's a good receiver. He's got one problem. He can't stay well. He's had a little nuisance injuries ever since he's played football. Came to Green Bay last year. They picked him up on waivers, and uh, he got a slight injury, and he only played one play for him, but they can keep him healthy. He can help all, his football team. all that slide? He had knee surgery. <laughs> the slide. <laughs> I thought knee he, surgery to France. This is a hangnail to others. That should, ne- that should never slow you down. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> day in the hospital and a day out and you're on the field. Inches short of a first down is Sammy Lee Johnson. Lynn Dickey with his first completion of the uh, football game with 11.30 remaining in the first half. Brings up the Packers. Out of the eye formation and off is Steve Atkins and Atkins nailed short of the first down. Atkins, another member of the Packers coming off knee surgery. Don Good was there defensively for the Chargers. You know, you mentioned the speed of Casey Merrill as the Packers, Francis. And you talked about what he might run the 40 in. But your old coach, Bud Grant, doesn't even bother with determining what a man runs the 40 in. He doesn't believe it's that relevant. I think he's right. All he wants to know is if you can go chase down a ball, carry a run, catch a, catch a ball, or as a back run away from defensive players, he doesn't care what the 40 is. And many people get injured running a 40-yard dash. As Green Bay's uh, uh, player did, uh, uh, Mark, Mark Lee, Lee. Can. Second round draft choice. Hold a hamstring. Third down in the yard to the first. Sammy Lee Johnson. And second effort gets the first down. Out over the 35-yard line. Frank Duncan was up there initially. Thinking back over some of those Minnesota Viking backs you had for so many years. Might be a little embarrassing the time before the 40. Well, you know, I, I don't think Chuck Foreman was any great speed versus in the 40-yard dash. But, oh, one thing, he could sure make yards running the ball. He could beat people in pass, uh, in pass offense, too. He could, be, bl- he could very, blister for 10. It's going to be very interesting to watch Foreman with the Patriots. He really will, and I hope he does well. You know, I was laughing about Sammy Johnson. He was always Sammy Johnson with us, Frank, and now he's added a little name, Sammy Lee. <laughs> he's big enough to be what he wants. Sammy Lee was a great diver. First and 10. Johnson gets the first down. Now, to 35. Lynn Dickey doesn't like his set. Looks out over there to John Thompson, who apparently was in the wrong set. And Dickey doesn't like it. Calls timeout. He'll move over to the sidelines to confer with Bart Starr. And we'll be back in a moment. My... Back in Canton, Ohio, and typically first preseason game of the 1980 football season. We have not had a thrill a minute as we are 10-14 away from halftime. Ron Cassidy, one wide receiver for the Packers on first down and 10. Walter Thomas from 87, the other. The setback, Sammy Lee Johnson and Steve Atkins and Lynn Dickey. And it's incomplete intended for tight end John Thompson. Lost his feet at midfield. Dickey, who even at this point wants to make a mark on Coach Bard Starr, very unhappy with himself, overthrowing behind the receiver. But the a one, bad throw. It was a bad throw. But the one thing he's doing better now, he's got some quick rhythm passes going for him. And you've got to do that against a pass rushing line like San Diego. He started the game off, taking four and five seconds to throw the ball. It's too tough. Dickey again, as we told you earlier. Started the last three games of the season for Green Bay last year after 34 consecutive starts by David Whitehurst. And we have not seen Whitehurst today. Second down, 10. Hand off. Steve Atkins. Atkins. Looks for the opening, finds a small gap and gets to the 39-yard line. A pickup of about three. It'll be third down and seven. Don Good in there defensively for the Chargers. That's another story. Don Good, what's going to happen to him? Rumored to be Good traded player. He uh, lost his player. job to Ray Preston. He was the number one draft choice a few years ago. Was a starter for him. Got hurt. Ray Preston played his way into the job and doesn't want to give it up. And Preston and Lowe had great year. Yeah, that's right. Years. Five intercepts each, didn't they, Frank? They sure did. And if you're two outside linebackers with ten interceptions, you're doing something. Third down and seven. Ball at the 38-yard line. Could have been a false start because two of the charges came off sides. Going deep, intended there for Tullis. Incomplete. One of them was Big Wilburn at 6'9". I don't think he can hide. He was trying to jump back. Mike Williams defensively on Tullis. A couple of chargers went simultaneously. Here we go. He's, used, he's using the old stutter count there, and there goes Wilbur, and there goes Big Hands Johnson both. They want to get off the ball and rush the passer, which they do very well. Jim Tunney marks it off against the chargers. 
Off side, 99, still third down. So Wilbur collects his second five of the day. And it'll be third down and three for the Green Bay Packers. No score. Canton, Ohio. Hall of Fame day. Capacity crowd. That's not a whole lot. This venerable old stadium only holds 20,000, but certainly this town's steeped in tradition. The NFL formed here back in the early 20s. I think it was 1920. 28! George Hallis, one of the founders, headed in the garage. And Steve Atkins holds on, gets to the line of scrimmage, might have got a half a yard out of it. Certainly not the first down. It'll be fourth down as Lyndon King was there defensively for San Diego. And we'll see the punting unit coming out for Green Bay. David Beverly, there he is, and dropping deep will be John Floyd. Fourth round draft pick, as we said a year ago. Not a bad receiver last year for the Chargers when he got in there. Ten receptions. Beverly off the side of his foot, and it'll go out of bounds. Much further upfield, I'm sure, than... He wanted to see it happen. ABC's Wide World of Sports, next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, 12.30 Pacific Time. A good, solid fight. Alexis Aguayo against a kid named Boza Edwards, Cornelius Boza Edwards, whom I caught in a fight a couple of weeks back in London. He is a terrific young lightweight. Alexis, moving up in class, is going to find him a tough cookie. Wide World of Sports. Was Aguayo, wasn't he the snake man, Howard? No, that was Alfred. Fredo Escalera. Get him confused. On first and ten. Kirkland. LaRue Harrington incomplete. Up there defensively, Dave Simmons. I never did like that snake. I watched that Benitez fight last night. He can fight. Fredo is a fighter. Now wants to be called Wilfred. I got a kick out of all those years with certain scribes saying Leonard never fought anybody until Duran. I don't know what they call Benitez, one of the cleverest fighters, inch for inch and pound for pound in professional box. To the game. Second down, 10. San Diego with Mike Kirkland remaining at quarterback. Inside handoff. Bo Matthews. Piled up. Line of scrimmage. That'll be it. Hustling Green Bay defense. You get that with youth. You got it early in the season when it's hot and sticky and when you're trying to determine who's going to make that 45-man roster from what right now is about an 80-man roster for Green Bay. You know, Bo Matthews, Frank, has been a disappointment to San Diego. He's got all kind of size. He's a bad first-round choice. He's got great speed. Many people thought he was going to be a great back, and he just never has even been a good back. But I'll tell you, they've done some job with the draft, San Diego, over the recent years. Third down, 10. Kirkland must put it in the air. Kirkland sacked again back at the 24-yard line. Mike Butler this time, I believe, in there on Kirkland. Mike Butler's going against a rookie offensive tackle over there, and uh, he's uh, he's having a nice time. That yeah. brings up fourth down. Kirkland dropping back to do the punting. Jafus White, former track star, Texas A&I. They say he does a 40 and 4-5. You have to find that 40 in front of you before you can Yeah, go. let's see if that helps him right now. <laughs> Kirkland with a brilliant punt, driving Davis White all the way back to the 22-yard line, and somebody must have talked to Davis White because he hurdles his body into the pile up at the 35, and the flag is down. 53-yard punt by Mike Kirkland. It was a little clip. Well, if they wanted to find out if Kirkland could punt in game conditions as we await the formal announcement of the penalty, they know Kirkland can punt. They also know about him as a passer. Howard, we're waiting for the penalty here. Did you hear what Adderley said to me last night? Herbie? Yeah, Herb Adderley. Let's wait for it, Jim. About Vince? No. Uh, you know, I congratulate Adley on making the yeah. Hall of Fame. He's a great defensive back at Green Bay. I've played against him many years. And he came up and said, well, thank you, Fran. You helped put me here. <laughs> now, what do you mean by that? <laughs> Wasn't hard. He only intercepted a few of my passes. I must say, I helped put him here. <laughs> uh, late Vince Lombardi used to say, I'm some coach. I tried to make Adley a wide receiver and a running back. <laughs> First and ten for the Green Bay Packers. The ball at their own 16-yard line. Inside eight minutes remaining in the first half. No score. Handoff goes to Atkins. And Atkins.
over the left side. Maybe gets a yard out of it, a yard and a half. We'll call it second down and eight. Lyndon King defensively in there for San Diego, a third round draft pick. And a former safety man, Lyndon King. Second down and eight. Every year, this stadium jam with fans. They pour in from all over the country to witness the ceremonies. You'll see part of those ceremonies, the induction ceremonies at halftime. Second down and eight. Atkins gets the call again. Goes the right side out over the 20 to about the 21. Short of the first down. Third down and four as Gary Johnson slides out there defensively and makes the stop for San Diego. That's a crowd. And again, I told you, this was a, this was a really an old stadium. Been around for a long time, Boston Stadium. Well, didn't you watch the Canton Bulldogs play here against the Decatur Staleys, Frank? I think Frank played probably against the Canton Bulldogs back in those days. When the Decatur Staleys had Chuck Dressen as their quarterback. The old ear flaps they wore. Mm -hmm. Why do you say they, Frank? <laughs> Third down and four. Green Bay sends Cassidy in motion. Dickey drops back, looks. Man open, but he can't get it off. And hustling in there defensively to make the play. Number 69, John Lee. You know, John Lee's made a couple of plays. Uh, it's kind of catching when you play with great defensive linemen like yes. You look at old John right there. He's been in the league five years out of Nebraska, and he's made two very good plays today. Trying to make a mark and make this football team. Running unit on. David Beverly, as we watch Lee, move to the sidelines. I don't know about you, Howard. Fred, I'm, I'm waiting for a thrill here. Not a lot of, not a lot of offensive fireworks. If we so get far. one, we'll have a scoop. Bring the divers back. Look at John Floyd, positioned right at midfield for San Diego. They'll have field position. Beverly has to hurry and over end, and Floyd will have an opportunity. Slip sprawls forward to the 37 yard line. 37 yard punt by Beverly, who was hurried there defensively. It was Carl Swank coming down for Green Bay. We'll be back with 5.45 remaining in the half. That's James Harris, Grambling College, Grambling, Louisiana. He's kicked around some in this league. Buffalo, the Rams, now San Diego. He is an excellent backup quarterback and figures to be that for this team this year. L.A. acquiring Harris for a fourth-round draft pick four years ago. Mid back up to Fouts. First and ten, the Chargers. Kirkland remains the quarterback. Inside handoff. Pile up there for a loss of two or three yards. That was LaRue Harrington, a rookie out of Norfolk State. It's not a two-yard loss. It'll be second down and 12. If San Diego is to improve their running game, it's going to be after the first two weeks of training camp, but they haven't accomplished much yet. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, there have been basically a passing team, and if you're going to be forced to be a passing team, it's nice to have Dan Fouts and John Jefferson and another man we have not talked about today, Charlie Joyner. He was only in one series also, but Joyner had 72 receptions a year ago. On second down and 12, Kirkland. Knuckles going out in the general direction of Bo Matthews. Incomplete. It'll be third down and 12. Maybe he should punt it to him. <laughs> I think he might do better. And Bo Matthews was open, folks. I'll tell you, mentioned Joyner. I don't think any receiver runs more precise routes than Charlie Joyner. He is a superb player. And for guts, do you remember that wind-up game against Denver last year? Twice taken to the dressing room room with injuries twice back on the field scored the winning touchdown third down 12 Kirkland under pressure again and Kirkland goes down once again at the 46 yard line well, I can't really tell you, folks, whether the offenses are bad or the defenses are good. It's a your question. I don't know, but the offense looks bad. They're a match for each other. Yeah, they are. 457. Well, it figures to be. We weren't trying to kid you when we came on the air. It's a hot, humid day. These players are working out sometimes four hours a day and two-a-day workouts, seven days a week. They're leg-weary. Davis White is deep. Kirkland hurries one. Trying to 
force the fair catch by Davis White. And it takes a oh. good bounce for San Diego inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. 36-yard like punt for Kirkland. I like the way Kirkland got that up in the air. He was hurried, but still he knew he wanted to kick short and get big hang time on it, and he did just that. I think you'll enjoy the halftime show, despite the paucity of efficiency in the game thus far, because you're going to see some of the greatest men who have yet played the game in action footage, and then you'll see the registry of their emotions as they responded to installation into the Professional Football Hall of Fame today. Deacon Jones, 75. Jim Otto, double zero. Bob Lilly, 74. Herb Adderley, 26. At halftime today. And Lynn Dickey, number 12, a quarterback for Green Bay inside his own 10-yard line. First and 10. Dickey fires. All right. Completes. All right. To Walter Tullis, and Tullis turns on the speed and gets out to the 45-yard line. Walter Tullis free agent coming up in 78 back up for Jim Lofton the gifted receiver for Green Bay let's look at it again all right he fakes a little slant to, to the fullback comes back sets up good he's got people open all over the field but he goes to Tullis best pass he's thrown all day Tullis runs a good pattern against Mike Williams then he does something with it talking about the draft Howard here's a free agent of 1978 he's a pretty good football player Walter Tullis Delaware State First and ten, ball just inside the 45. Still no score, nothing even close to a score as we watch Steve Atkins run into a lot of traffic. Back at the 41-yard line for a loss of three. It was Dijernay, the Mr. Everything, along the line for the San Diego Chargers and Willie Buchanan up there to help. But to show you the kind of problem Bart's going to have, he emphasized defense in the Green Bay draft. The first three picks, Bruce Clark, Penn State, George Cumbie, Oklahoma, and Mark Lee. Now, Clark is in Canada, Cumbie is in the hospital, knee surgery, Lee is out with a hamstring. Second down, 13, number 84, Fred Nixon, a highly regarded rookie out of Oklahoma in there for Green Bay now, a one wide receiver, but we go back to Tullis. Tullis has not handled the football incomplete. It was one he could have handled. Good defensive play there, however, by I'll tell you, Mike Pete Williams. Shaw. Mike Williams made a nice little play of, of stripping this thing out of his hand. Here comes Tullis down. There's Mike Williams. Gets one shot. That's Lego. He's going to curl in. He should come back for the ball a little more. Mike Williams strips that ball away. San Diego Charger is down at the 35-yard line. Let's re-emphasize that rule with the beginning of the football season, Fran, for the fans. You're allowed defensively one chuck inside the five-yard area from the line of scrimmage to five yards out. But once that quarterback leaves the pocket and is, in effect, a shooting target... He's a threat as a runner as well as a passer. Then. Exactly. Then the receivers face one chuck per man in any area of the gridiron. And the five-yard limitation no longer applies. The man down is Big John Lee, number 69. Uh, while they're working on him, Howard, you know, I talked to Ahmad Rashad, who had a great year again last year, and this new rule of no chucking and no bumping has given the, uh, the receivers a license to steal, and they're running crazy in secondaries, and it's driving defensive coaches mad because they're trying to come up with some way to cover these guys. It's almost impossible to cover Ahmad Rashad or Lynn Swan or a Stallworth man on man with no, with no ability to chuck him. Last time I saw Ahmad Rashad was at the Mets Center in Bloomington, Minnesota at the holmes Ledoux fight, and I'd rather forget the whole occasion. <laughs> Just see off on his own power. Appears to be all right. The loss again back at the 41-yard line. Third down, 13. Lynn Dickey remains the quarterback. Dropping now a semi-shotgun. That is a shotgun. That was a sawed-off shotgun with Lynn Dickey inside of his backs. Well, not all that effective as Gary Johnson just turned it loose, bore it in on Dickey, dropped him back at the 33-yard line. It'll be fourth down, and Green Bay will have to turn it over. Frank, oh, big hands Johnson. Hadn't gotten a whole lot of publicity, but he's about as good a defensive tackle as playing the game. In Pro Bowl last year, he can really play. Johnson. He and Kelch. He's part of that 75 draft. Beverly into punt. All right, watch Dickey's coming off the field limping, and I hope it's nothing serious, but he's having a hard time walking off the field. There he is. They told you about his problems, just had 
had a great deal of metal removed from his leg. I tell you, Flynn is already racked up. There's John Floyd. That deep drop. He's deep for San Diego on fourth down. David Beverly to punt. Beverly with the low semi-spiral that Floyd takes at the 28-yard line. Dropped immediately by good coverage at the 33-yard line. 38-yard punt there by Beverly. And again, the story at the moment, Lynn Dickey limping to the sidelines. Zeke Bratkowski has moved over there as we look down on the field to talk with him. And he does not have any trainers hovering around him. But I would suspect that we would see David Whitehurst next for the Green Bay Packers. San Diego has the football first and 10, their own 32. No score in the game thus far, 244 remaining in the half. Mike Kirkland remains the Charger quarterback. Bo Matthews, one setback, number 41, along with LaRue Harrington, number 34. This is Harrington. Little quick screen to the right, and Harrington turns on a burst of speed to the 40-yard line. Again, of eight, it'll be second down and two. Well, that has been their best play all day. It's a little running screen out to either the right or left, and they get it off quick. The Green Bay Packer linebackers are dropping deep, and uh, they can stay with that a while. Kirkland can complete that pass. Yes, he specializes in the lateral. Oh, no! There's Dickey again. We told you about years ago in Houston, 72, I believe it was, dislocated hip, shoulder surgery, 76 when he came to Green Bay, 77, leg surgery. As we watch Lou Harrington coming up short of the first down at the 41-yard line, and we are approaching the two-minute warning. But Lynn Dickey, certainly you have to admire the courage of this man who has hung in there, pulled it back together, started the last three games for Green Bay a year ago, 10 touchdowns passes, but we have just watched him limp off the field once again. Now look at Lynn Dickey on the sidelines, and again, it is the leg that he not only injured when he had the hip problem, but also which he broke in 77. Not a great deal of concern, not too many attendants around him, so perhaps it is not anything to do with the leg he broke in 77. Third down, less than two yards to go for the San Diego Chargers. At the 41-yard line, handoff goes to LaRue Harrington, right side, short of the first down. And it'll bring up fourth down. Well, in view of Lynn's physical history and in view of his absence of success under those circumstances in the league, if he's your number one quarterback, you begin the season in deep trouble. Well, you do. And this is another issue here, Howard. This man has gone through so much problems with injury. Sometimes it's time to say, you know, I love football, but with all the problems I've had injury-wise, it's time to get out. And, and I hate to see a man play uh, with the handicaps he's having to play with. He cannot play like he used to play, and uh, he's got some decisions to make in that regard. I know he wants to play very badly. During your years with Minnesota, many of the Giants felt it was time for you to get out. Many of the Giants felt that? Yes. <laughs> Lee on the sidelines being attended to. He's had problems throughout the course of the day. Looks like they're readjusting his pads. He's a player, though, John Lee. Sure is. Good backup, man. He'll be with this club. Mike Kirkland back to punt for San Diego, and Jafus White, the rookie from Texas Eye, is deep for Green Bay. Kirkland can't turn this one over. It'll be short. It was taken by Johnny Gray with the fair catch at the 34-yard line, and that will be where Green Bay takes over. We're looking down on the field to see if it will be David Whitehurst. Yes, it is. Well, this is a big kid. You'll remember when he broke in out of Furman. His first start, in fact, was on a Monday night game, and he was impressive. I think it was in Atlanta, Frank. Do you recollect? And uh, the kid... He's got a lot of guts. He's got a lot of strength. Good. Where it was? I was in Washington. Washington. When he, when yeah. he broke it, he did very That's well. Right. Yep. Whiter is scheduled to play the second half of today's game. We have 140 remaining in the first half with no score. First and 10. Whiter is right to the air. Immediately fires over the middle and is deflected. Intended for John Thompson and hustling in there with Lyndon King, batting it away. Thompson open for just a moment. Whiters started 34 straight until relieved by Dickey, the third game from the end of the season last year. Well, Frank, he's the victim of what so many young quarterbacks are the victim of, as you look at his picture there. The Packers, I know Zeke and Bart thought he was going to be great two years ago, and he hasn't been great yet, and now everybody's a little down on him. I think he can still play pretty well. 
Second down, 10. 34-yard line for the pack. Go, 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 go. Firing for Nixon, and Nixon tries to get out and get the deflection to midfield. He does not. Now, he had an open man. He didn't throw that ball well. You know why. You know what he did wrong, Francis. Tell him. Well, it wasn't a matter he didn't throw the ball well. He just didn't throw it at the proper time. You know, everybody looks at the quarterback with a big arm. He's got a strong arm. He can throw hard. The most important thing is you know where and when to throw the football. At that time, the win wasn't right. And the degree of touch. So critical. There's Dickey walking behind the Packer bench. Appears to be all right. Shaking his head. Again, the degree of attention that Dickey is getting makes us think that this injury is not too serious. Out of the shotgun, David Whitehurst. Third down and ten. Man open, fires complete. Simon Lee Johnson. Johnson short of the first down. But not by much. Mike Williams defensively there for San Diego. Let's look again. Whitehurst is getting back fine. Looks good. Good pass protection. He goes to the right man. Sammy Johnson, the man who's open. And Sammy Lee, as he's known by now, he can help him out of the backfield catching the ball. It'll be fourth down, and the Packers will will go on fourth. Less than a yard. Yes. Why not? Two tight ends now. Paul Kaufman back in along with John Thompson. Sammy Lee Johnson is the big man in there, number 39. Steve Atkins, number 32, is also in there. No. I can throw now. And high over the top is Atkins. He has the first down at the 45-yard line, and Green Bay will probably use one of their timeouts with 117 remaining in the first half. Indeed, they do. And here comes David Whiters to the sidelines. That's the story. No score, not a heck of a lot of excitement. 117 remaining in the first half. One of the greats, Gail Sayers, inviting you to come and visit the National Football League Hall of Fame here in Canton, Ohio. That message brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. We show you a very emotional moment that took place earlier today when Bob Lilly was enshrined earlier. That, of course, coming up at halftime. Green Bay, first and ten. The ball at their own 45-yard line. Wilbur Young, quick charge. Not offsides, however. And Whitehurst, incomplete out to John Thompson. Thompson open, but as you saw, Whitehurst under tremendous pressure. Mike Williams covering Thompson. That was a very impressive quick start by Young. Here's the pattern. Whitehurst really, really, he, he didn't throw the ball well, but he's having to throw off his back foot because of the pressure of the of San Diego defensive line. It's a very tough way to have to throw a football. Now you mentioned it earlier, Howard. Wilbur Young certainly is no stranger to that defensive end spot. He was out there nine years with Kansas City. Never of all pro status, which he approached last year at tackle. Second down and ten. Flag is down. Whitehurst is down at the 35-yard line. 108 remaining. Here in the first half, the Packers have one timeout. The charge is a pair. And David Whitehurst is coming up with him. Mm, he is. Now where do you go? To Bill Troop? Now you bring back Bond Star. He is in some degree of pain. Yes, he is. It looks like an ankle with him. He's having a hard time walking. And he's going to take himself out. No, changes his mind. He should. Well, he should. Absolutely should. This is not smart to stay in in this situation. If you're young and you're watching this as a kid, don't ever fool around with anything you think is an injury. It is true. Take it off the field. All right, I mentioned that the number one draft choice of the Green Bay Pack is Bruce Clark, the brilliant lineman out of Penn State. Instead, vaulted to Canada, is playing for a former Packer up there, Willie Wood, number 24. Let's take a look as we wait on this play at Bruce Claw. This with all of his years running the Nittany Lions. Third down and 20. The quarterback is Bill Troop, a former Baltimore Colt. We've seen a lot of the Baltimore Colts and Troop. It's complete out to Walter Tullis. Short of the first down, Mike Williams laying off comfortably. He had that 20 yards with which to work. And Green Bay will punt with one minute Every remaining in the first half. Everybody in Green Bay wants to know the real story of why Clark went to Canada. His agent, a young man from California, Mike Trope. And it did seem that Clark left precipitously without staying around long enough to find out what he could really get out of the pack. David Beverly pounds one inside the 10, where it's taken by John Floyd. And Floyd 
struggles out to the 15-yard line. Howard Sampson down there defensively for Green Bay. Under any circumstances, Clark did go. Trope steered him up there, and some think that Clark was used as a measuring rod in terms of ability to get monies for other players. But, be that as it may, Clark is up there, and Bart Starr has had to pay a price. He was talking earlier with his wife as you look at Bart. A very tough time. Let's go back to the action. And we'll watch Ed Luther, the rookie from San Jose, San Diego's top draft pick in the fourth round. Fires over the middle, incomplete. Luther, a rookie from San Jose State, where he set numerous records up there passing. 6'2", 190 pounds. That's the kid. And they really like Ed Luther, as most teams like a, a, a rookie quarterback. And the reason they like him so much is because they haven't seen him throw any interceptions yet. Johnny, Johnny Sanders, the general manager, said, frankly, we had him rated second only to Mark Wilson of BYU among all college quarterbacks last year. Wilson, of course, with Oakland. Second down, 10. Luther inside handoff. Goes to Harrington over the right side. And Harrington out over the 20, close to the 22-yard line. Second sticking away here in the first half. No score. No team even threatening. We've had no field goal attempt. It's been what you expect from an early preseason game. A lot of tired football players trying to use legs that are weary from two-a-day workouts. But you remember here a year ago, Frank, we had a great game between Oakland and Dallas. Uh, yep. A lot of scoring. Uh, mm, late uh, in the game, though. Friend. But it, 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 a lot of scoring and good football. Third down four. Ball at the 22-yard line. Luther content to run the timeout. Gives it to Leroy Harrington. And that should expire the time here in the first half. Stay tuned now because we want you to see the induction ceremonies that took place earlier. And we'll be back with those induction ceremonies. A look at some of the players in action after this message and a word from our local station. Stay with us. Part of what has made Canton, Ohio, in the pleasant Ohio Valley, such a great and bustling young town, is the Professional Football Hall of Fame, where the memories flood one's mind as one views the Carlisle Indians bust, Jim Thor. And as one goes through the Great Hall, there are so many more, including the remarkable coach, Vincent T. Lombardi, who gave the Green Bay Packers their glory years of the 60s, and who made into one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time another Hall of Fame figure, Bart Starr. Yes, their deeds and dogged faith. And now a new one, mainly from the pack, though he played for Dallas joins them today installed as a hall of famer the man who had a lock on the defensive cornerback position number 26 herb adley he became a virtual terror at that position and always behind him was the coach whom he revered so much this was in super bowl two picking off a la monica pass downfield touchdown clinching their second consecutive green bay super bowl victory. Today, at the induction, he talked about Mr. Lombardi. I have to talk about Coach Vince Lombardi, because Coach Vince Lombardi reminds me so much of my high school coach. Those two people had more to do with me playing football and being successful than anybody in the world. And I feel a certain sadness in my heart, but I can feel happy and feel good because the spirit of my high school coach and Coach Vince Lombardi is within me. He won number 75, and they called him Deacon, a nickname that belied what he was on the football field. Played for 14 years, three different teams, a 14th round draft choice. Accredits George Allen as the coach who taught him the most, made the most of him, made him produce more than he ever thought he had to give. And justifiably, now, in the Professional Football Hall of Fame, he thanked his mother today. There's a lady in the audience today who is and has been my second best rooter and supporter. 
Although she knows little about the actual game of football and despises violence in any form, she's very proud of my success and because of her prayers, her thoughtfulness and her admiration physically got me through it all. My mother, Maddie Jones. The Secretary of Defense would like to leave you with one last thought. Every man is free to rise as far as he's able or willing, but it is only the degree to which he thinks and believes that determines the degree to which he'll rise. Thank you very much. So the deacon and her battle, and coming up in just a moment, you'll be seeing Jim Otto and Bob Lilly, Hall of Famers today. We'll be back. He won number double zero. Position center. A record 210 consecutive regular season games. Unparalleled. He was passed by by the National Football League. Got his chance in the old American Football League. Became, in a sense, a football pioneer. Wore the silver and black of the Oakland Raiders. Al Davis gave him that chance. And now today, some say he is the greatest who has yet played the position. He spoke his thanks to Al Davis today. Uh, the man to motivate me and guide me to where I am standing today, and that man is Al Davis. He sold me on the Raiders, and not only that, he sold me on myself. He, along with Ollie Spencer as my line coach, John Madden as my head coach, kept me motivated to play in some of the most exciting football games ever played in the National Football League. The great come from behind wins, the fluke plays for us, some of the fluke plays for the other team, but you remember some of those games, I don't have to tell you about those, they were a great part in making my dream come true. The first man the Dallas Cowboys ever drafted, the only number he ever had, the only professional football uniform Bob Lilly ever wore. A defensive end in the beginning, Tom Landry made him a defensive tackle, says it was the smartest thing he ever did. All over the opposing backfields, all over the gridirons of the National Football League, Landry also says he was the greatest tackle I have ever seen. So Bob Lilly, the monstrous sized one, goes into the Hall of Fame. Big as he was, he choked up. There were basically three men in my life. My father, my coach in college, and Tom Landry. This is a tough part. My father died 10 years ago. My coach in college died a year ago. And these were the three men who, influ who influenced me the most of my life. Tom, I thank you. I'm awful sorry. I'd like to say hello to my mother, who's in the hospital back in my hometown. She had planned to be with us here today, but was unable to. I'd like to tell my brother and sister, who are back there with her, that I realized that during the years that I grew up, there were many times that I got all the attention. And I appreciate the fact that they were patient. And that they continue, continue to love me. I'm sorry. I just can't help it. <laughs> Nitsky told me it happened. I didn't believe him. <laughs> Certainly, thank you for listening to me and bearing with me today. Thank you very much. Bob 
Bob Lilly was not too old to cry today, and a lot of us cried today during those ceremonies, but there are a lot of us all over the country who could cry today for still another reason. We are in Canton, Ohio, and a year ago today, just outside the Canton Airport, the Canton Akron Airport, a man died. One of America's greatest athletes, it's true. And speaking personally, one of the finest men I have ever known in the whole wide world of sports. Yankee captain, Thurman Munson. Yes, it was a year ago today, that tragic plane crash. He was so young, just 32 he would have been. The most valuable player in the American League in 1976. A lifetime batting average of 292. A World Series batting average of 313. The team leader of the Yankees. The man who continued the tradition of the New York Yankee pinstripes. I spoke to his widow, Diane, today. That family is holding together. It hasn't been easy. The kids miss their father. We at ABC, at ABC Sports, want Diane Munson and the kids to know we miss their father still and her husband because we respected him for what he was. A great parent, a religious man, a leader who somehow took all of the virtues in sport and made them seem sound and enduring still. Good luck to you, Mrs. Munson, and you children too. So as the ceremonies continue here at Boston Stadium, Canton, Ohio, the home of Thurman Munson, just a moment of sobriety in memory of a truly great athlete, as Howard has already put it. There is no score in this first preseason game between San Diego and Green Bay. And we'll be back after this word from our stations. Once again, Foster Stadium, no score between the Green Bay Packers, San Diego Chargers at halftime, and the special expanded edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports is being brought to you by Ford, the incredible world of Ford, where we're building a new generation of small, fuel-efficient cars coming this fall. And by STP, STP gas treatment and STP oil treatment. And by light beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Aftate for athlete's foot. Aftate kills athlete's foot fungus on contact and prevents reinfection. Aftate, it's the killer. Cloudy, warm, and quite frankly, it's just miserable to play football on a day like today. The clouds have moved in. We've had thunder showers throughout the course of the day. It they occurred during the parade. We're looking at Bob Lilly as he is being driven around this venerable old stadium. Hard against the Hall of Fame situated. We can just see the dome from our announcing booth. Herb Adderley, who wore 26 to greatness with the Green Bay Packers. 48 interceptions. Ten of them returned for touchdowns. One of the all-time greats, David Deacon Jones, and of course the other one, Jim Otto. Howard? Thank you very much, Frank. Quick update in accordance with our ABC Sports policy on sports news around the world. The Moscow Olympics coming to an end. The boxing competition over. Teofilo Stevenson, the Cuban heavyweight, becomes the only man in the history of that weight classification in Olympic competition to win a third gold medal. It was apparently not easy. He won a split decision over Peter Zaev, who is not that good a fighter. I've had Peter in a number of fights. But Stevenson won it, so it's the third time around for him. Notably in the boxing competition, Cuba dominated. Six gold medals for them and only one for the Soviet Union. Quickly, let's move to Major League Baseball. In the top of the fifth, Toronto is leading the Angels 4-3 to three on the wings of three home runs. One by Woods, one by York, and one by Bob Davis. And in the top of the fourth in the National League, Steve Dillard provided a two-run homer to give at the moment. Chicago, a 3-2 edge over San Francisco, who got its two runs on a two-run homer by Jack Clark. That Clark can hit. You know about J.R. Richard, hospitalized, fighting back from a stroke, and 
prayers of everybody are with J.R. As the Houston management has said, we don't care about his pitching. We care about his life and his getting well. So there, a picture of J.R. Seems only yesterday he was starting in the All-Star game for the National League. The vicissitudes of life are many and varied. And here at the Hall of Fame game, the halftime score, nothing to nothing. As Frank Gifford told you, we didn't kid you from the beginning. It has been a downright dull game. Howard, just quickly, an update. If you are with us earlier, you saw Lynn Dickey leave the game. He has a sprained arch. He might be able to come back and play. David Whitehurst, who replaced Lynn Dickey, has left the game with a sprained medial left ligament. ligament. He will not play, and that could be serious. There is no score at halftime. San Diego Charge is, of course, the defending champions of the Western Division of the AFC. There is Dickey testing out that arch, which we told you about a moment ago. Frank, if either one of those uh, men play, they got to go to another ex-Baltimore Colt quarterback, Bill Troop. And I would suspect we will see Bill Troop. In fact, we are being told now by our producer, Terry O'Neill, that Bill Troop will be the starting quarterback. Don Coriel looking on. There is a winner. I'll tell you that. He loves excitement in his football. Had a remarkable record at San Diego State before he went into professional football. San Diego State, 104 wins, 19 losses, two ties in 12 years. Won a couple of divisional titles with the St. Louis Cardinals between 73 and 77. Those in 74 and 75. And in his very first full season with the Chargers, took the Chargers to their first divisional title since 1965. Here's Mike Wood. He'll kick off for the Chargers deep. For the Green Bay Packers, number 25 is Jafus White. He's back there with Andra Thompson, number 89. White, the rookie from Texas I. A and I with it. Andre Thompson on the goal line. Thompson finds a gap and gets out to the 23-yard line where the Green Bay Packers will take over. And they are bringing out Bill Troop. You remember him back up to Burt Jones with the Baltimore Colts, 6'5", a 220-pounder. He signed as a free agent with Green Bay in June, played in Winnipeg last year. He was four years at Baltimore before that. He started 11 games in 78, as you recall, when Burt Jones had his problems. He also backed up Jones in 76 and 77. Best season for a troop. 1978, he had 10 touchdown passes in relief of Jones. First and 10. Ball inside the 25. The handoff goes to number 42. That's Walt Landers from Clark College. And Landers meanders around and gets over the line of scrimmage to the 21. Pick up of one, where it'll be second down and nine. Ricky Patton, number 30, is the other setback. Now in there for Green Bay, number 30, Ricky Patton. Another free agent that signed. Looking at Walt Landers, six feet, 214 pounders, signed as a free agent in 78. He also was among the many Packers that underwent knee surgery last year. Give Landers a couple, it'll be second down and eight. Ball out of the 27 yard line. Quarterback once again is Bill Troop. Troop. Side, might have got more outside, gets over to 30 to the 31. In of three or four, it'll be third down and three. Don Good in there defensively for the Chargers. These ex Baltimore quarterbacks are positively expert at the quick hitch behind the line. Yes, that they're in trouble. Well, you know, both guys, Kirkland and Troop, uh, they both had high, they had high hopes for them in Baltimore. They had their chances in Baltimore and didn't quite make it. And now uh, maybe they can develop late in their athletic career. We'll see. Troop, a seven year oh, man out of South Carolina. Looking out over a third down and three. They go lined up in their 4 3 deep. Going pretty much with their veterans. The flag is down. Troop sidearms it. Gets it out to Ricky Patton. Patton struggles over the line needed for the first down. But again, a flag is down. I thought there was a hold on Jerry Dove of the Chargers' defensive secondary. Howard, that was very perceptive. 48. I think you're absolutely right. Referee, once again, Jim Tunney. No score in the first half. Not even a field goal attempt. Team seesawing back and forth, middle of the field. Here's referee Jim Tunney. Apparently we're having technical difficulties. 
And the penalty, of course, declined. And the first down picked up by Green Bay. Warm, sticky day. Thunder showers in the morning, and we'll see if we can pick up this holding. Well, here's Ron Cassidy. He's got his hands on him. Now he's pushed him, and I guess they said that was holding. Maybe it was. I didn't see him hold out. <laughs> Come on. 37-yard line for the Green Bay Packers. They suffered so severely through injuries last year. They've already lost a couple of quarterbacks here in the first preseason game. Ricky Patton, left side. Finds a little bit of a gap. Squirts out to the 41-yard line for a pickup of five. It'll be second and five. Don Good made a stop for San Diego. Our fans in Atlanta, Frank, might remember Ricky Patton. He played for the Falcons a couple of years. He had some pretty good moments with it. Pretty quick back, and we have another Packer down. That's Sid. Is that, that's uh, Otis Harris. The Otis Harris. The Otis Harris. Now being attended to on the 40-yard line of the Packer medical staff. And we'll be returning to Foster Stadium in Canton, Ohio, after this. Otis Harris came off the field under his own power. Looks to be all right. Sid Kipson has moved in at the right guard for the Green Bay Packers. Number 64 at second down and six. The ball at the 41-yard line. Again, I'll remind you, no score in this game thus far. And San Diego appears to have been offside. Louis Kelcher, who is coming off knee surgery from a year ago, although he did play a little in the next to last game for San Diego against New Orleans. Louis Kelcher, all pro, big man, 6'5", 282 pounder, number 74, there he is. Kelcher and Young on the left side is, that's really a pair. Wilbur Young, 290 pounder, Louis Kelcher, 282 pounder over in the left side defensively for San Diego. And I don't think I have to tell you again, the referee's mic, Jim Tunney's mic is not working here today. Second down and one, ball at the 46 yard line. is Ricky Patton and Ricky Patton. Yardage for the first down out close to the 48-yard line before he's thrust backwards. So again, will depend upon where they marked the ball, but it did appear as if he had broken the plane and has the first down. Again, we'll tell you the Lynn Dickey. Medical report on him. He has a sprained arch. He perhaps could play. David Whitehurst to relieve Dickey will not play. Sprained medial ligament of the left knee. Steve Atkins, also back from knee surgery from San Diego. Ricky Patton has the first down for Green Bay. We're in the second half, Hall of Fame Day in Canton, Ohio. A miserable day, quite frankly. It's been had thunder showers throughout the course of the day. It's been very warm. But it really has not dampened the enthusiasm this town produces for the Hall of Fame and Shrinees. Tim Otto, Bob Lilly, David Jones, Herb Adderley. All inducted today to bring the Hall's count to 205. First and 10 at the 47-yard line, Green Bay. Young almost got in there for the pitch job, but this is Walt Landers, and Walt Landers runs into Don Good, who's all over the field today for San Diego. And we talked about that earlier in the first half. Preston and Woody Lowe both having great seasons as outside linebackers for San Diego last year, and Good is trying to get his starting job back. He was a starter when he was hurt his shoulder last year, replaced by Ray Pest Preston. Preston had a sensational year for the Chargers. Nothing wrong with Horn in the middle, Giff. No, there isn't. They keep looking around. I have for a couple of years say, well, we got to do something better, but Bob Horn is very steady, particularly with those big guys in front of him. Gary Johnson, Louis Kelcher. Loss of two, it'll be second down and 12. Whistles blow. They've expired the 30 seconds, and it'll be five yards against Green Bay. 
enjoying this game, Fran? <laughs> Speak up over there. Give me, give me a little help. Do a little analysis for me, will you? Well, I uh, like to analyze uh, <laughs> that, uh, that call. That took him a little too long. They got to shorten their calls in the huddle. Bart's got plays take too long to call, evidently. Second down, 17. Ball back inside the 40-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. Bill Troop, right back on the football, but another loss of about three yards. Again, it's sloppy play, sloppy play that you expect in the early going of the preseason. If you can imagine getting up every morning at 7 o'clock, muscles sore, body hurts, going out at 100-degree temperature, working two and a half hours, coming in, having lunch, trying to grab a quick little nap before a meeting that proceeds another two hours on the field. He's fighting out and having a soft drink after that and then going to meetings again that night. That's what they've been going through for two weeks. Third and 20. Motion man is Fred Nixon. True. Trying to get isolated coverage on the left side. Doesn't get it. Picked off. Deflected there. It was deflected by Hal Stringer and taken by Cliff Thrift. So San Diego has the football inside of Packer territory. Let's take a look at it again. The deflection will come from Hal Stringer. He just rolled a little bit to his left, uh, scrambling a little bit, if you will. He's trying to find somebody open. Okay, everybody back. Ball is deflected up by Stringer. Interceptions made. The troop is still learning. And Ed Luther, the top draft pick for the Chargers in the fourth round. A rookie quarterback from San Jose State. Back in the lineup. Flags go. Luther, incomplete, tried to dump it out to John Capaletti, who's seeing action for the first time today. Capaletti, of course, missed all of last season with an injured groin, and he's been suffering from it again at the start of this season. Illegal motion against the Chargers. But on that play, Ed Luther didn't have to show us how hard he could throw the ball. When you have somebody five yards away from you, you lay the ball, Howard, gently into his arms. So there is Cliff Rift, who came up with the interception. I love that name. Packers decline the penalty to bring up second down and 10. The ball just short of the 45-yard line. Ed Luther, 6'3", 206 pounds. Set a lot of records out in the Pacific Coast Athletic Association of San Jose State. Last year, 57% on his passing. 20 touchdowns. Hands off this time. Capaletti. Capaletti. Perhaps the longest run we've seen of the day. Sore groin and all. Johnny Gray upsets Capaletti, short of the first down by perhaps a yard. It'll be third and one. Heisman Award winner in 73, number one draft pick of the Rams in 74. 76, 77, 78. Capaletti was over 500 yards in each of those Rams seasons. He's a good, solid football player. He doesn't have great speed, but he knows where to run, and he can help this football team. He does block. Doesn't make mistakes. He can block, and he can catch. Third, less than a yard. The call is Hank Bauer, the patented short yardage man for the Chargers for the past couple of years. Bobbled the ball. Recovered there quickly by Reggie Haynes. For the first down, ball at the 33-yard line. There's old Reggie. He likes it. Free agent out of the bottom of Las Vegas. Two-yard bow. Ed Luther brings the Chargers up. Larry Price is split out to the left. Wide receiver number 21. John Floyd, the other wide receiver. And this is Lydell Mitchell. Mitchell retains it back. Mitchell is running like he did for those thousand yard seasons that he had in Baltimore. It took us 36 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, but we just got a little action. And we got it like a little play. Watch Wilkerson pull out here. Wilkerson leads the play, gives him a little block, slips a tackle, and Lionel Mitchell accelerates a little bit. Now, if he can give them that kind of running, that'll help this football team as well as Capaletti can. As many years at Baltimore, 75, 6, 7, he was all over 1,000 yards. And he's just coming back from a knee problem over over a year ago. 
Longest run of the game, 26 yards by Lydell Mitchell. Capaletti gets the call inside the five, stays on his feet down at the three-yard line. And that's what Capaletti does best. He uh, had an option run there. He just ran to, as Lombardi would have said, run into daylight against the old Packers. Second and goal. Penn State backfield in there. Lydell Mitchell, of course, great performer there. Someday the NFL is going to run up a monument to Joe Paterno. Boy, he has produced the professionals. Timeout called by San Diego. Apparently, the young quarterback Ed Luther not satisfied with the personnel he had in the huddle. So, with second down and goal, he calls timeout. The ball at the three-yard line, and we'll be back. With a little over eight minutes remaining in the third quarter from Canton, Ohio, Hall of Fame football game, the first serious threat of the game thus far. The San Diego Chargers have moved to a second down and goal, the ball at the three-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. Quarterback Ed Luther has Capaletti and Lydell Mitchell in the eye formation. Handoff, bobbled by Mitchell and picked up in the air and then bobbled again. I believe Green Bay has it. Mitchell bobbled the ball, got it back, and it was jarred loose again, and he loses the football. It is Steve Luke, who is always around the football for Green Bay, and Green Bay will have the football at the five-yard line. Let's watch this replay and see where he puts the ball. Here's Luther going to make the handoff to Mitchell. Let's see if he gets the ball in there good. No, he hit, he hit Mitchell way too high. He's supposed to put it around the waistband there, and he put it up in his shoulder pads, up around his chest, and that's too high. And as a running back, I can tell you, a quarterback has got to put that ball in the belt there because you saw Lydell Mitchell. He was looking for the option off the lead back. He was not looking for the ball. He was expecting it at the belt. He got it in the shoulders, and I would not blame Lydell for the fumble. First and ten, Green Bay. Bill Troop again, the quarterback. And off to Landers. Landers, maybe a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Walt Landers, a three-year man out of Clark College. Defensively, San Diego's really going with their personnel all the way. Will be Young's in there, Kelcher, Gary Johnson, DeJernay. They are, Frank, and on the offensive line, they've had the starting offensive line in the entire game, as well as their defensive line, as you just mentioned. Could that be Coriel? He does like to win. Yes, he does. An intense man. And a whale of a football coach. Second and nine. Inside handoff. Ooh, and close to a safety. Walt Landers struggled out of the end zone as Gary Johnson slithered in, collected Walt Landers. Uh, we'll have a third down. The ball will be at the one-yard line. Frank, we've said it many times, that is the best place on the field to throw the football. It's the hardest place to defend against the pass, and so many teams are content to try to run it out of there, and it's almost impossible to run it out of there. Now they're in a must-pass situation, and this is even more difficult. When Bart Starr was quarterbacking, they had a third down in a situation like this. You could almost bet. he give you a little play action, hang it up deep. We don't see that much anymore. I doubt if we'll see it now. It's Bill Troop. Looks over the San Diego defense, and uh, they have expired their time on the clock. Well, he's going to give Bart a chance to tell him what to call here. He's going to go over. No, that was a no. deliberate timeout. Bill Troop calling timeout. Didn't like what he had called, and you're right. He's going over and chew the fight a little bit with Bart Starr. There's Zeke Bratkowski. I always wanted coaches help when it was third and 15. I'm on my own one-yard line. I, I didn't have any magic calls for that situation. I wonder if Zeke or Bart do. Oh, Green Bay quarterback, Brad Kowski. A lot of Bart brain power there, huh? Well, there is. A lot of years of great football between Brad Kowski and uh, Bart Starr. With all that brain power, you really still need the talent. Yeah, you do. And there's no magic call with third and 15 from your own one either. All right, Howard has moved over to our on-camera position. He is there now with the operating general partner of the Oakland Raiders, Al Davis. Howard? Thank you very much, Giffer. This is a familiar figure, of course, considered by many the smartest man in all of professional football. Quickly, you traded Stabler, got Pastorini. How is Pastorini shaking, shaping up? He's doing very well, Howard. He's, uh, he's been excellent. He's throwing the ball deep, which we wanted. And uh, our, our quarterback situation at camp is uh, training camp Santa Rosa is fantastic. And uh, out of Pastorini, Plunkett, tremendous rehabilitation. And we have the uh, brilliant young prospect, Mark Wilson. Now that you 
you're staying in Oakland for this year at least? Are the fans buying tickets? Well, the fans, uh, we've met some resistance, Howard, naturally. Some of our fans are very disappointed, but uh, then again, many of our fans understand our particular problems with the locale people and uh, with the National Football League in general. I want to make it clear the problem is too legally complicated to be explored at this time. We don't buck duck it for one single minute. Back to Frank for the moment for the play-by-play. And we will watch a third down, 14 attempt, and here comes Walt Landers over the left side. Gets out for a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be fourth down. Here comes the punting team. We're going back to Howard and Al Davis. Now, quickly back to the leader of the silver and the black. What about Mark Wilson, the brilliant one from BYU, your quarterback of the future? Yes, I would think so, although uh, we think Pastorini and Plunkett can play in the future in the next few years. But Mark, as you well know, is a brilliant prospect and uh, just signed with us about 10 days ago, and we look forward uh, to great things for him. Giff. Beverly has to hurry, gets it off, and John Floyd is deep. Takes it for San Diego, gets inside of Green Bay territory to the 48-yard line. Corral there, 52-yard punt by Beverly, who really had to hustle. Once again to Howard. All right, final question, Al, and then goodbye. Get your plane and go back. This is the question. For 17 years, you have produced the most consistently winning and excellent football team in the pro ranks. Is that reign over? Are you now in decline? No, to quote an old phrase of Vincent, Vincent Lombardi, the greatness of the Raiders, it's in his future. We're in a transition period. We were 9-7 and seven the last two years, but I honestly believe we're close to, to dominating again. We're just a little bit away from it, and I think uh, you'll see the excitement, you'll see the dynamicism of the Oakland Raiders uh, in 1980, and we hope we can go from there. Good luck, Jill, and thank heaven for your little girl. Well, thank you very looks much. Great. I love you, and thank you very much for your support and the whole network, and really much. It's thank you, a great thing. Thank okay, you. Giffer. How do you answer a question like that? Are you in your decline? <laughs> very good, though. <laughs> All right, Capoletti got three. It's second down and seven. Unloading is Ed Luther. Going deep. Has a man just out of reach. Hustling down there was Jim Leger. And Ed Luther just off the fingertips. And, well, on a day when Jim Leger had not been working out twice a week, he might have got there. You'll see the legs collapse as he gets about to the five-yard line. But I like the call. It's the first deep pass we've had the entire day, and Luther called it, and Luther put it up, and he threw the ball pretty well. Francis, Day should have not reached quite as soon as he did. He might have had to catch. Francis, I love you. It's exactly what Al Davis said. And he said, that's why I got past Arini. It's now a game for the deep throw. And Third down, seven. Luther again. Firing short. Almost picked off. Intended for Lydell Mitchell. Almost picked off. Mike Douglas, he was surprised to see the football. We've had a break in the action for a second. Al is still sitting behind us. He's so pleased with what you just said about it's a game for the deep throw. Of course, Al's always liked the deep throw. He had the mad Bobber Lamonic out there for so many years. Those gazelles running after the ball, and he built his, his team on the on the deep pass. Cliff Olander in there to punt for San Diego. Started to go to a lateral passing game, and we want to start going back and playing pressure. Olander pounds it. Because I really believe White. that Wait pressure at the is the answer in professional. Football. Out to the 14-yard line. Jafus White, Green Bay, will take over their 14-yard line. We have 509 remaining in the third quarter and still no score on Hall of Fame Day in Canton, Ohio. Green Bay has the football here in the third quarter. Canton, Ohio, they have the football at the 15-yard line. Well, new players running in and out of the lineup. Vicky Ray Anderson is in there at running back now for the Green Bay Packers, number 44. He's teamed with Ricky Pat, number 30. The quarterback remains Bill Troop with Ken Lecky and David Lynn Dickey and David Whiters, both on the sidelines. Troop, a lot of time. And open. Big tight end. Brad Nixon, who was lined up at tight end. This is a young man, a fourth-round draft pick, who everyone on this Packer team has been impressed with. Rookie out of Oklahoma. By the correction, that's Paul Columbia. I told you they're running a lot of men out of there. But you did mention Fred Nixon. They have high hopes on Fred Nixon. They think he could be a starter for him by the time the season starts. Paul Paul Columbia. Paul Columbia is a rookie out of Villanova. 
First and ten. Ball at the 27. Columbia, 81, remains a tight end, bottom of your screen. Ricky Patton. Flags are down, and Patton goes down. He got back to the line of scrimmage with his progress. But we got the defense offside yeah, again. They are, like it. There was movement there. Yeah. But there again, they've got those big guys in there, Leroy <laughs> Jones and Gary Big Hands Johnson and Kelcher, <laughs> DJ Renee. You made a friend out of Al Davis, I'll tell you that talk. He was so thrilled when you, he said, we had one raw from this crowd today, he said, that long pass tried by Luther. Well, he's he said, right. it's the name of the game today. Well, he's right about pressure offense. With the, with the defensive rules, as they are now, uh, uh, aiding the offense as they are in the receiver. That's You've right. got to get the ball down the field. That's and that's, right. we've only seen that happen once the entire day. I think basically, though, the coaches come into a game like this. Don't you agree, Fran, Howard? That they want to look at things. They want to look at individual players. They really are not caring about a, a win or loss. No one's going to remember whether you win or lose something like this. They want to see players. Vicky Ray Anderson, the youngster out of Oklahoma, gets a couple. It'll be a second down and three. Baseball scores, Toronto 4-3 to three over the hapless Angels in the eighth inning. And in the National League, the Cubs lead the Giants 5-2 in the sixth inning. Frank, I agree and disagree with you. I don't think winning or losing this game is of great importance to them, but they want to see their players make play. They have to do to win in the National Football League once the season started, and they're not doing that today. All right, second down, three, the ball at the 35-yard line. Side, trying to cut behind the block of, of Carl Swank out there. Does not make the cut and will lose a couple of yards. It'll be third down and five. It was Lyndon King, again, defensively for San Diego. Both Lyndon King and Don Good having good days for the Chargers. <laughs> yep. That's ridiculous. And that's the leading it? passing team in all of football a year ago. The San Diego Chargers, eight, eight yards passing. In all honesty, the, the Green Bay Packers offense just cannot go against the defense as good as the San Diego Chargers. That has something to do with their ineptness on offense. They're just not a match with this defense. Point out again, Burt Jones played one series. That was it for Burt Jones, who led all the passers last year. And leaving the ball at the center is Bill Troop, and there's a wild scrap. Well, as there usually is. You know, it's funny. In the midst of this ineptitude, Fouts, who was in there, but briefly, what, six plays, completed four, four of passes. six, uh, uh, Frank and Fran. <laughs> he gained 26 yards as San Diego gets the ball. He gained 26 yards, and the other quarterbacks have given back 18 of it during Louis, the game. Louis Kelcher gets the football off of San Diego. Let's take a look at it again. They need him to come back in a big way. Before he got hurt, he might have been one of the better defensive tackles in football. Can he come back? We'll find out. He gets a good charge off the ball. And the one thing he can do is recover a fumble he is between huge. his knees. He is huge. He is huge. The size quick. of that body he could recover about ten at a time. <laughs> On first and ten. Rydell Mitchell. No running room. Mitchell lowers the head, drives the ball forward, gets to the line of scrimmage. That's it. That line of scrimmage at the 30-yard line. There's there there is a suggestion from the truck that Kelcher is overweight. No, that's the way Louis looks. He is utterly huge. At the Lombardi dinner in 1975, I sat next to him down in Houston, and I tell you, he took four chairs at once. <laughs> Ed Luther with second down and ten. Out of time, throws it low, but it's collected there. And short of the first down, San Diego receiver, Greg McCrary. Tied in, coming across the middle, Luther with throwing the ball just a little low, but he was making sure of it. Looks like an electrical storm. There's yep. Greg McCrary, picture of him. He's a former Atlanta Falcon and a pretty good tight end. They're, not, they're in pretty good shape at tight end, Howard. they got Kellen Winslow. they got they get Bob Klein back, who I think can still play. And McCrary, they're in pretty good shape. Bob is really angling for... Uh, Track suitable to his taste. Yes. Bob Klein, who played tight end last year when Kellen Winslow was hurt, their fine rookie from Missouri. Klein in there, you can move Winslow all over the field in a different formation. That's why they like to have Klein back. Third and short, and Ed Luther botches it up, but he struggles up close to a first down. I don't know whether he got it or not. I don't believe so. I don't either, and he's going to learn to get smarter in the National Football League, or he won't last very long. <laughs> can really run into a crowd when you turn the wrong way out of that quarterback spot. 
Short of the first down by about a yard. You know, these are two critical areas that the young quarterback has made in, in, in third down situations. One, he gave a bad handoff to uh, to uh, Mitchell, and here he went the wrong way. Real story coming out on the field at the moment. Number six, Ralph Benerska. Set to attempt the field goal. A lot of Cleveland fans here. Canton, of course, being proximate. Benerska, who was stricken with an intestinal disease a year ago. He was in critical condition. It required surgery. There was not much hope that he'd be able to come back. Going into this season with a string of 13 consecutive field goals. But he misses as he hits the upright from 39 yards. Benerska. In regular season play, has 13 consecutive field goals as he makes his attempt to come back here in 1980. No score remaining. We'll be back. A few moments ago, Fran Tarkenton pointed something out on this field goal attempt by Benerska. The hole just wasn't a clean hole. Uh, Fuller fumbled the snap from center, and he didn't uh, get the ball down cleanly for Benerska, and uh, it's uh, a little bit off target to hit the goal post. Not his fault. 29 seconds remaining in the third quarter. You mentioned Benerska had a remarkable recovery, Frank, and it's true. They did a beautiful thing for him with a dinner this past June in San Diego. Ball just over the 20-yard line. All the first string wide receivers are back in. We come with the reverse, and this will be Andre Thompson. Blockers in front. Thompson, and if he stays on his feet, Thompson almost broke it off. Down to the 35-yard line. Beautiful blocking out in front of Andre Thompson. You just mentioned the wide receivers were all back in. Green Bay with a little razzle-dazzle. Well, you don't see this this early in training camp. A reverse play, and they caught him napping on the other side. They're over-pursuing. He gets yeah. the blockers out in front of him. There's the quarterback. Is he going to block anybody? Well, he did. Well, you say you don't see this this early. It's, in effect, an end around with Andre Thompson. You don't see it that late either because when you and I sat together in the 1970 Super Bowl game in New Orleans, Hank Scram drove the Vikings crazy using Frank Pitts, number 25, repeatedly on the end around, and it was as if the Vikes had never seen it before. Now, Howard, Recollect? Now, Howard, you'll never let us forget that, will you? You weren't with the Vikes now. No, you were with the Giants. Yeah, but I still love the Vikes. Though. Thompson, down to the 35-yard line. Clock started, and we are not going to get another playoff before the third quarter expires. 45-yard pickup by Thompson. Still no score in this game. That one missed field goal, and we had an opportunity for San Diego as inside the five-yard line. They could not score. We'll return for the fourth quarter in just a moment. and he moved to the 14-yard line. First serious that we had, and it came on a reverse by Andre Thompson with 45 yards. For those people in the areas of the country who are getting our video, we're going to show you a replay as we look at James Lofton. And he makes a move, breaks it into the middle. He's a great prospect as an outside receiver. All he needs is a quarterback who can get him the football. If he gets a good quarterback to do that, he'll catch a lot of footballs for Green Bay. Lofton, the youngster out of University with 54 receptions a year ago. He is a finalist. First and 10, the ball at the 14-yard line, and we understand our video is completely lost around the country. We'll try to keep you abreast of the game as well as we can with an audio call. We've had severe thunderstorms here in the Canton area. Lightning is flashing all around us, and Francis is leaving. <laughs> we'll be back in Canton, Ohio. Rainy, thunderstormy Canton, Ohio. Again, from Canton, Ohio, Frank Gifford, along with Howard Cosell, Fran Tarkenton. We are experiencing technical difficulties that we really don't understand at the moment. We have a great deal of lightning in the area. But again, we are in the fourth quarter of the first preseason game of the 1980 NFL season. 14-11 remaining. Green Bay has the football. First and ten. The ball at the 14-yard line of the San Diego Chargers. Quarterback is Bill Stroop. He plays Lynn Dickey and injured David Whitehurst. Who missed all of last season with a knee injury. 
down. It'll be first and goal for Green Bay. I want to tell you, this lightning is getting a little bit frightening. And Gifford has a career record with lightning. He caused the game to be called by lightning, the last uh, all-star game ever played in Chicago. He caused the coaches' All-America game in Lubbock, Texas, to be called the same year. That was its last game. The little guy with the cloud over his head. No <laughs> Why don't you finish it up, Frank? Fran and I are going to safety. In the meantime, the Packers may score a touchdown here. They're looking pretty good in this drive. They, uh, their offensive line's taken over a little bit. And Bill Truth is not uh, very familiar with this offense. He hasn't been here very long, and he's uh, got to come back for a little help again. And three timeouts to check his calls with Coach's star. That means Freddie he has no more timeouts. Whoa! Did you, you see, see that, that flash? Yeah. Put your eyes on the game, guys. It'll be first and goal at the three-yard line, and there's a game that I'm looking forward to. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, there's no question the Pittsburgh Steelers and how good they are, but I've been out to see the Falcons work out a couple of times in the last week, and they are looking for a much improved football team, and they've got some players, and they've got a great young tight end, Junior Miller, who Get can the play break. from Nebraska, and I'm telling you, he can play like a Russ Francis or those that, that caliber player. You notice the Steelers sold their backup quarterback, Krujek, to Washington. And they're going with that youngster Malone from Arizona State. All right, we're organized now. At least our quarterback, Bill Troop, is. He's used all of the three of his timeouts. He has the first to go. The ball is the three-yard line. It's a White. It's a ball carry, and White flips one tackle and gets back to the four. He'll lose one. It'll be second down and goal yard line. Excuse me, this is, again, we have players wearing double numbers. I identified Harlan Huckleby of Michigan as Jason White. They are both wearing 25. We'll have Pittsburgh in Atlanta, August 15th, August 24th, the Eagles at New England. And the regular season. If he holds on to the football miraculously at the 15-yard line because he was really powdered. Stringer coming in from a, not a safety blitz, from a corner blitz, if you will. He saw the action going the other way, and he just released himself. Well, you know, in this, down to the goal line, they'll do that a lot. Troops should have been aware that that guy might be coming and got rid of the ball quicker. Heads up because you saw both backs going. Stringer knew he had no assignment, no coverage, and he just followed the action and sacked Troop back at the 13-yard line. Third down and goal from there. Red Texan comes in, number 85, rather 84. Troop no. fires and it's incomplete. Wouldn't have helped you, he completed it. In that situation, you've got to yeah. throw it for the end zone as another bolt of lightning pops near it. I am fooled. Howard, how long do we have to stay? Start spreading the news. We're leaving today. But it is getting dark. The lightning is here. The thunder is here. And still the fans, most of them have remained. I don't want to be a the field goal it. unit. That means Tom Fernie. And there's an interesting situation. That is. Place here in with the Green Bay Packers. Their Chester Markle hurt last year. He was replaced by Fernie. with was teaching school. Brought in in October. And he is going to miss his attempt that would have put the Packers out in front. Bernie hit from 30 yards. Complete your story. Uh, Hold it, a flag right. is down. I think San Diego is offside right in the middle of the line. Look at they surge too quick. That's, the flag is down. And it is against Green Bay, yes. so San Diego will take over. I call that one a penalty. To finish your story, Frank, they brought the kid Bernie in. He connected on seven out of nine. Markle became extremely depressed, was going to quit football in the offseason, came back to give it a try. The same Chester Markle, who a few years back, stunned the league with his place-kicking efficiency. He was good when he came up, and I don't know what has happened to him lately, but he used to be one of the premier kickers in football, and he's not an old man. He was struggling a year ago, 4 of 10, when yeah, they went in to play right. the Jets, hurt his knee, had surgery. All right, we have timeout here in Canton, Ohio. We'll be returning in just a moment. This. The lights are on at Fossil Stadium here in Canton, Ohio. The skies have darkened, a thunderstorm in the area. We see lightning crackling all around San Diego as a first and ten. And LaRue Harrington is the receiver from Ed Luther. Harrington will get out of bounds out of the 
six-yard line, six-yard pickup. It'll be second down and four. They might be well advised to call this game on account of lightning, from my point of view, anyway. Well, Howard, I certainly hope it doesn't start raining because it might impair this great offensive show we're seeing. They played under lights like these when the Canton Bulldogs beat the Providence Steamrollers in 28. <laughs> Penalty on that play. Jim Tunney has marked it off. Illegal motion against the San Diego Chargers. That takes the ball back to the 15-yard line. It'll be first down 15. Can we suggest a continuous clock? Should run the clock on incomplete passes. Ed Luther seeing a lot of action here in the second half. Draw play goes to LaRue Harrington. Harrington back to the original line of scrimmage, the 20-yard line. Perhaps a yard more. It'll be second down nine. Will Harrington, we talked about him earlier. Six feet tall, 210-pound rookie out of Norfolk State. Sixth-round draft pick, but many thought he was a sixth-round pick. Should have gone higher had it not been for knee surgery after his 79 collegiate season. Ed Luther, directing the San Diego attack, the rookie from San Jose State. Man open, fires, and it's incomplete intended for John Floyd, who... Again, might have put those hands up a little too early. The ball was thrown long, but he just got them up a little too early. Luther didn't really throw this ball with any zip or crispness that you would expect out of this young man with a strong arm. Here comes Floyd down the field. Simple post pattern. He'll break to the middle. Wide open. Plenty of room to get the ball in. He it, was, had it. it was catchable, but the ball should have been thrown better than that. Third down nine. Youngster from San Jose State. Great credentials taken in the fourth round, San Diego's first pick of the draft. Fires over the middle, is complete this time, and John Floyd holds on at the first down out near the 34-yard line. We mentioned earlier that Floyd was a good replacement, but let's see. We going to look at that again? It was Floyd who went in when Charlie Joyner was yeah. hurt, you remember? Yeah. And that's when he had a chance to show that he could play in the big league. And Floyd was limping earlier, and he has now left the field. And Jim Leger, first-year man out of San Jose State, played with this quarterback, Ed Luther. And there, Floyd, but this is LaRue Harrington. Harrington, bounced to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Moving up there quickly, makes the stop. Mike McCoy, one of the uh, one of the most underrated cornerbacks around. Well, the old Alvin Madden is fine when you uh, when it's there, but in that case, Luther came off the pad a little too quickly. He had a man going down the field as Jay, who came in the field, but he came off him much too fast. Again, we understand you have lost video in some parts of the country. Ed Luther looks over a second down and nine at the 34-yard line, and the rookie from San Jose State back fires. Goes out to number 35, that's Steve Whitman, and Whitman, the rookie from Alabama, comes up short at the first down, out around the 41-yard line. And apparently we're playing yo-yo in your television, set with the video. It could be better than the football. Problems are because of a tremendous electrical storm which has moved into the Canton area. They have been around. There have been warnings on the radio, on the air, all day long about these storms. And we are in one. Third down and three. Ball at the 40. Scoreless football game. And again, it could have been false action on the part of San Diego. And that's what it did to me. The linemen are indicating that. Every Jim Tunney retaining his cool. Frank, you know, Bart has gone to the 3-4 defense this year. Uh, a big change for Green Bay. And how it gets he's proud. He's, he's got to be happy with the success of the defense. The linemen today, they've given up no touchdowns. A pretty good San Diego team. Uh, not many yards. San Diego has gone pretty much with their offensive line, too. Up until recently. They've made numerous changes in there now. Luther looks over at third down. And seven fires over the middle, and it's incomplete. Tinder down there for number 85, Jim Leger. Bring up fourth down, we'll see the punting unit. And that means that out will come, I believe it'll be, uh, Bill Stroop will be punting. I mean, rather, uh, Cliff Olander. This is true, but all 
their quarterbacks punt, Frank? Yeah, Old Landis is back on a quarterback punting show here. Yeah. Gets off a beauty. Take it at the 25 yard line by one of the 25. Either, I think that's probably Jaffa twice. There are two 25s, as we told you earlier. 40 yard punt by Olander. Frank, I lost Howard. Where is he? He's left. <laughs> he is that is he really is the dark here now. Here comes the win. We'll try and hold things together for you, but I think we're in for a thrill. The amazing is the repeat of a hurricane. Ball at the 37-yard line. First and 10, Green Bay. Eight minutes, 40 seconds remaining here in the football game. No score. True. Southern has taken down at the 28-yard line. It was John Singleton, a rookie from Texas and El Paso, I don't believe the coach is. The coach has just left us. He told us to tell everybody out there in TV land goodbye. Third down, 19. Drew back. Fires out again, intended for Mickey Ray Anderson, incomplete. That'll be fourth down. Frank, tell me really, who has the authority to call off a game in a situation like this? Is it the referee's authority? I think whoever is representing the National Football League at this point, I think Peter Rizal well, has departed. We got the highest authority that's been here, Mr. Rosell. Yeah, but he got out of town before it was too late. All right. Rick Engels will be putting now for Green Bay. Deep for San Diego. We'd like to tell you, it's just a little dark down there at the moment. of a strange thing. <laughs> Just moving in on Kent. We'll be back. <laughs> the flag on the pole at the end of the stadium indicates the type of weather that has all of a sudden moved into the Canton area. Sheets of rain and lightning crackling all around. And Frank, I'd like still to make, the game continues. I'd like to make this a statement. This is incredible. <laughs> this really is. <laughs> I bet you John Davidson will leave. Kathy Lee Crosby would stay. Where are you, John? San Diego. Hand off. Turdell Middleton around the left side. Middleton. LaRue Harrington sweeps the left side. And I'll tell you, it is very difficult now. I mean, it's buckets, it's sheets. This is LaRue Harrington. Harrington, the rookie out of Norfolk State. Gets the ball down to the 40-yard line of Green Bay, first and 10. Wow. Look at that. Inside handoff, Steve Whitman, a rookie of Alabama, breaks a tackle inside the 30, down to the 27-yard line. Up into there, Mike McCoy. <laughs> you better hope and pray somebody scores before we have to go into overtime. <laughs> Play an extra period. Oh, I never period. thought about that. <laughs> We're going to test the drainage capability of this field here at Fawcett Stadium. We might be testing the drainage capability of Ohio. Hey, there are your brave men. That's right. 
I'd like to tell you who that cameraman is. We know we know him, but we don't know which one it is. That's Dauphin, Dauphin, I believe, yeah. The Dauphin. On first and ten, getting a call. Whitman again. Pounds up the middle. It's about three. Now the winds are coming. <laughs> and there are people in the stands who still have not moved. Gain of five there by Whitman. Don Coriel a while ago as we look at Bart Starr. Shirt sleeves racing up and down the sidelines. That's what like you call back the in the sunny climes of California. Humble. Why not? Pile up. Who's got the football? I've got to say, this has been the most exciting part of the day, though, guys. I have now decided that Gene Klein, the owner of the Chargers, is the smartest man in the league. Ed Luther. He did not come here today. He's played by from San Jose State, falling on the ball. There's Don Coriel. He doesn't even have a rain hat on or a raincoat. I don't even know that Don knows it's raining or not. Uh -huh. Third down and seven, a loss of a couple. Ball at the 24-yard line, and Luther bobbles it again, gives it off, I believe, to Whitman once again. Or Lydell Mitchell, Lydell that Mitchell. is. Mitchell will lose a couple more, and it'll be fourth down, and the sky is starting to light a little bit to the left, if you can believe that. Timeout has been called San Diego. San Diego has called timeout. They have a fourth down and seven. And Ed Luther will move over to talk to Don Coriel. Very cool on the sidelines amid a very hectic atmosphere. The situation in Canton, Ohio, 529 remaining in this game, lightning flashing all around. Many of the people, remarkably, have stayed here, and this game apparently has been called. With the score, nothing to nothing. I don't know whether it's delayed or called. It is not over. It is delayed, we are told now. The players are leaving the field. Fans are all over the players. I think some of the players might feel the game is over. But we are told that it will be delayed and another bolt of lightning streaks across the sky and it is really spooky here in Canton. No score in the game. On fourth down, Vanushka had come out for San Diego for what appeared to be a field goal attempt. Referee Jim Tunney said that's it. Uh, we thought he had called the game, but we are now told that the game will be delayed. The skies are lightning somewhat to the west of us. But quite frankly, the field is a quagmire. Buckets and sheets of rain swept the field, lightning all over. And Hall of Fame Day has, for the first time, really been bothered by rain. Of course, this time of the year, here in the Midwest, we do have a great deal of thunderstorms. We had a severe one this morning. The watch has been in effect throughout the entire day. And it really erupted here in the fourth quarter. Again, the first NFL preseason game of the 1980 season, matching the Green Bay Packers. They were 5-11 and 11 on last year, going against the Western Division champions of the AFC, the San Diego Chargers. Dan Fouts just went the first series of plays. We've seen a lot of players move in and out, and we do not know whether we will be coming back for the conclusion or not. We are told it is just a delay. And we will wait and see. And meanwhile, my colleagues have got out from underneath the truck. They <laughs> have taken off their spike shoes. Let's join Howard and Fran. To the fat guys. All right, we'll rescue you, Frank. <laughs> we should all be rescued. Obviously, Jim Tunney deserves some credit. He did the wise and necessary thing. They just couldn't have gone on here. And indeed, lives might have been in danger. Whether or not they're going to resume this game, I don't know. That remains to be seen. Frankly, I wouldn't. Well, I hope they don't. It is a dangerous situation. Whenever you have lightning, it is. If we're on a practice field, uh, I know the coaches would call practice in a situation like this, and they shouldn't endanger the players or the people uh, doing the game or the people viewing the game. Lee Trevino could write a book about the effects of a lightning strike. Yes, he could, and uh, it hasn't been much precedence for games to be called with, uh, with lightning around, but uh, we should set one today. We we have games called when Gifford does them. That's I right. mentioned the Chicago All-Star game, the Coaches All-America game at Lubbock, which he was party to the death of, and now this one today. So he's consistent. I tell you, see if Chet Forty is going to take 
All right, we're going to get a shot of Look my. At that. That's the kind of lightning bolt. Our director, Chet Forty, froze this picture on that lightning. That's what we've been facing for the last 30 minutes, and it was unwise to have gone any further. Chester obviously. Forty, that is some shot. The, the, really that, that really is, and that's what we have. It. You know, Howard, a while ago we were talking about a story about so many of the veteran players staying out of camp. You mean quality players, good team players, like a Jack Youngblood, a Jim Youngblood, uh, a Dennis Harrow. Larry you, Brooks. Larry Brooks. Do you think the reason is because of the big contracts that uh, the rookies have so, uh, have gotten this year? Johnny Lamb Jones started the New York Jets. Uh, Billy Sims supposedly got a mo uh, uh, in excess of a million dollars to sign. And these guys are not making that kind of money. I think it's a factor. They want to use every bargaining weapon they can to get what they can. But it's... I, Terry, would you put up a list? Yes. There you are. Here are the vets in the NFC who are not in camp. Just to speak further to the point, Goldbreth's an interesting case. There's no better back in the league coming out of the backfield as a pass receiver than he. He's been given a deadline of Monday, I think, by Steve Rosenblum of you know, the you Saints. Always, you always think that you got malcontents who stay out in situations like this, but we're looking at uh, at a group of players up there uh, that are night malcontents. They're, they're quality football players, quality people, and... Uh, and I would imagine that a Jack Youngblood, who's not making anywhere near the money that some of these rookies are making, and he's been the premier defensive end in, in professional football for years, is, is somewhat upset and wants more money. Well, that's an old story, of course. And, of course, they'll be heard from in 1982, to the sore chagrin of the commissioner and the owners, when they seek possibly free agency. Uh, I, I'm sure they will, and I'm sure they're going to be encouraged by what happened in baseball this year, because in, in my estimation, the baseball players took the owners to the wall, and the owners gave in. And I'm sure that... Mr. Garvey's going to say that to the players again and say you can do the same thing in, in, in football. And uh, the baseball owners did the football owners no favor uh, when they gave in their situation. All right. That's what pretty that? What do you think of that, Howard? I think you're being pretty forthright about it. I also think that John Riggins, as this whole stadium is now emptied out, enough was enough. So I doubt strongly that they'll resume this game. John Riggins has a year to go this year on his contract and then an option year. And that's why he He's home in Kansas right now because he's trying to force Jack Ken Cook, Edward Bennett Williams, and Bobby Bethard into the kind of contract he wants. He comes off his greatest year. But his, but his, and that's an interesting thing because he's one of the higher priced uh, paid players in football. His contract has been rumored to be what in the three hundred thousand dollar range because I know in Minnesota we tried to sign him and couldn't because the Redskins gave him such big money. I cannot imagine his being a money situation such as the other players. Uh, it may be something else. Do you know? No. Okay, that takes care of that. All right. Here's a final baseball score. The Angels rallied to beat the Toronto Blue Jays. The score was 5-4. to four. That's final. And as we wind down here at Fawcett Stadium in Canton, Ohio, a reminder that the Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers will be with us Friday night, August 15th, from Atlanta Stadium against the Atlanta Falcons. So you will see Franco and Swanee and Stallworth and Brown. Bradshaw, and all of the rest of those great ones who have sustained such magnificent excellence over a period of years. And make no mistake about it, they're still the class of this league. They're still the team to beat. They're not old. They're not over the hill. Uh, I've never met Chuck Noll, but I have played against his teams. I read the articles uh, recently in Sports Illustrated, and I, I really think that uh, he has done a magnificent job, has been not heralded as much as some of the other coaches, the Landrys and the Schubert. He doesn't go for the good. publicity. Paul Zimmerman did write a good series in SI. Chuck Knoll wants to be known as a teacher and how successful he's been. In the meantime, NCAA college football begins Monday, September 1st, and we've got a great schedule there coming up for you, too. Monday night football, the regular season, September 8th, and we open with one of the classic rivalries of the league, the Dallas Cowboys at RFK Stadium against the Washington Red Redskins. And boy, what a game they put on last year. What a pair of games, in fact. And what and that's going to be an interesting team this year. The Dallas Cowboys without Roger Staubach. Uh, can Danny White uh, play? Uh, can Two Tall Jones come back? And can he work together with a John Dutton and the Randy White uh, and a Harvey Martin in that defensive line? It's going to be interesting.
interesting season for the Dallas Cowboys. Well, it's interesting to watch Tom Landry respond to this challenge. In a sense, it's made him young again. He's excited about it. He flew in last night on the red eye in order to make the presentation to Bob Lilly in that moving ceremony today. And when we talk to him about some of the new problems he faces, he's more than ready for them. I think he's going to find himself happy to be tested all over again as a great coach. Well, he's not the favorite guy again. Every other year, everybody says Dallas should win the Super Bowl. This year, nobody is saying that. Uh, uh, they've got some questions and some big question marks coming off of last year. And, and I think he has a chance to have a better football team, although he's not going to be better at quarterback because Starbuck was magnificent yeah, last I year. Yeah, I thought you were putting on a little bit there. All right. We will be back here in Canton, Ohio, as the lightning wanes. In just one moment, the Giffo will put his jacket on for the occasion. <laughs> All right, there you see the score. When the game was stopped with five minutes and 29 seconds left, dangerous bolts of lightning, hail pouring upon us. And so, wisely, referee Jim Tunney stopped the contest. We don't know whether or not they'll resume before we talk, Fran and Frank and I. We will not run over our normal program time. So that if the game were resumed after we left the air, consult your local yeah, if they resume an hour, they're the going to resume it without any medical equipment on the sidelines. The game yes. has been called. It has been, been called. called. Just, Very just wise, received though. word officially it's been called. We didn't see a lot today to be expected. We noted early in the contest, early in the telecast, that you'd be seeing a lot of substitutes. That's the usual routine, routine in this kind of affair. And the tragedy for Green Bay, uh, they lost their two quarterbacks so for how long, we don't know. Uh, Dickey and Whitehurst, and they've got problems there anyway of who to go with. They've got some fine young players, but they need some leadership at that position, and now they don't know where to go. In case you weren't with us, it was David Whitehurst replacing uh, Lynn Dickey. Lynn Dickey had a sprained arch, and he went out. Whitehurst came in, David Whitehurst, who started 34 straight games before Dickey took over last year. Well, Whitehurst uh, could be the most serious because uh, we heard from the locker room from uh, the Green Bay people that he had a sprained medial ligament in the left knee. That could oh, be very serious. Oh, goodness. That could mean That's even terrible. a walking cast. Well, a positive thing for both teams. Green Bay had to be happy with the three-man line on defense experimented with, and I think that the San Diego Chargers had to be happy with the way Lydell Mitchell ran and the way John Capaletti ran. And briefly, they did, but they did, they, they did look good. Well, there was that one brief flash by Lydell Mitchell where he was the old slithery yep. kind of back, and there was that one brief flash by John Capaletti. Yep. And they're certainly important to the San Diego success this year. If they could get a good year out of those two, uh, it would help them a great deal. What else you got to say? Well, what else there, Frank? Uh, well, there's no need to vamp much longer because pretty soon Frank will be reading the closing credits. There are some noisy fans down below. And in the light of some of the recent activities involving fan violence in this country, we hope that the good people of Ohio don't follow that unseemly pattern. Let's just recap once again. The uh, game was called 529 remaining in the fourth quarter. There was no score, but it was a memorable day nevertheless for four of the Hall of Fame inductees. Bob Lilly, of course, a great tackle for Dallas. Yamato from the Oakland Raiders. And, of course, well, Deacon Jones. Deacon he's Jones. been all over your back many times. Yes. And Herb Adderley, probably the finest cornerback that ever played this game of football. There they are, the four Hall of Fame inductees. They join 101 others to bring the Hall of Fame count now to 105. And it was a touching moment, no matter the weather. Yeah, and three of these guys, Lilly, Jones, and Adderley, Frank, came up the same year I did, 1961. So I really especially enjoyed seeing them get into the Hall today. And you will be in the Hall of Fame in a matter of a few short years, my friend, and you deserve it. You were a third-round draft choice. I thought they overrated you then, but you proved me wrong. See you okay. both in Atlanta. We're ready to go, Frank. Once again, no score in this inaugural game of the 1980 NFL season. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as a leader in sports. Television.